Rob Fitton Field on the campus of the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. Charter TV3 presents live coverage of Central Mass College football. This afternoon, two New England rivals square off as the Dartmouth Big Green visit the Crusaders of Holy Cross. It's college football here on Charter TV3. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome down to the field on Fitton Field. Andy Lacombe alongside Terry Wallace and Coach, Holy Cross got an emotional come from behind win a week ago over Yale, but their head coach, Bob Chesney, in his own words, says they're still a long way from being something. What has to be done today? Well, they got to keep the momentum going, Andy. Another really quality point today in Dartmouth, but he's right about it. You can always improve each, each week, and hopefully today will be the best effort to come home with another win. Offensively, they looked as good as they have all year last week in that win over Yale. This series goes back to 1903. Last year it was Dartmouth in overtime. Can the Crusaders get revenge in 2018? We'll see right after this. The kickoff is next. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident, before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Hi, I'm Mike Demers, General Sales Manager here at Berterra Nissan in Auburn. We'll give you the best price and leave you happy every single time. Our local team is ready to provide you with an unparalleled customer experience. Save $6,000 off MSRP on a brand new 2018 Nissan Rogue Model S. I want to invite you to come down and experience the number one Nissan dealership for sales, service, and parts in Central New England. Berterra Nissan, Route 20, Auburn, Massachusetts. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. An absolutely gorgeous day at Fit and Field. The sun shining on Holy Cross and Dartmouth here in a historic rivalry in New England between these two schools. Just prior to the game, our Brenna Wilson, third member of our team, caught up with Holy Cross head coach Bob Chesney. Coach, coming off the win last week, how do you kind of keep that momentum rolling into this week? I think it, it's just that, right? It's momentum that we create every single day when we're practicing. It's not anything that gets created right here today. It's just, you know, fine-tuning everything throughout the week, coming out here, being prepared, knowing we had a good week of practice, and, and putting our best foot forward. A couple slow starts to start the year. How do you kind of prevent that this, this game? It's just talking about it, you know, and practicing it, coming right out of stretch and getting involved quickly into some, some team sort of, uh, you know, drill, which is what we've been doing a bunch of. Uh, he's a good, very good football team, obviously. Great quarterback. There, they, what do you see the size of this D-line and offensive line? They're significantly bigger than us and uh, a good football team. So it's going to take everything we got. Awesome. Good luck today. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Brenna. Thanks, Coach. There's Buddy Tevens in his 19th season with – the Big Green, his alma mater, and he's had a, a lot of success here. Well, in Hanover, New Hampshire, that is, with Dartmouth. They lead this series 39-37 and four. Holy Cross with a slight edge at home. The Crusaders will get the ball first. Dartmouth won the toss and deferred to the second half, and we are underway from Fitton Field. It'll be Spencer Gilliam in the New Jersey. Coming back for Holy Cross, right up the middle, the freshman to about the 29-yard line. It's a return of 18 yards for the Crusaders. who have good field position, Coach, to start things off. Yeah, Andy, I think uh, Coach Chesney probably would come up in three or four of his plays that are really uh, thinking they'd be successful to get some drive starters going uh, because they haven't, they haven't started very well. They've ended well. 
Uh, so I, I, I look at some really uh, sound plays to come out of the bat. Nothing real, nothing tricky or anything like that. Get a couple first downs, get the drive going. Crusaders are in the new uniforms. Jeff Wade, the starting quarterback. These were unveiled earlier this week on social media. Black with silver numbers. The numbers might be a little difficult for us way up here with the glare. We'll do our best. Here's Wade throwing on first down. It's knocked down by one of those big defensive linemen that Coach Chesney alluded to, Rocco DeLeo, the senior for Dartmouth. Yeah, that time you got to get the tackle into him a little bit more, maybe in a cut situation so he can get his arms down so the pass won't be blocked. It's Wade in the backfield with Miles Alexander and a four-receiver set for Holy Cross. Starting things out offensively. Again, slow starts, as Brenna Wilson alluded to in the pregame interview with Bob Chesney, have been a problem for Holy Cross. Quick drop. Wade firing, and is it intercepted? Intercepted Isaiah Swan, the reigning Ivy League Defensive Player of the Week, has a pick and a tough start again for Holy Cross as, as Dartmouth takes over deep inside Crusader territory. Yeah, you, you see the quarterback, Wade, he just zones right in, kind of doesn't look off a little bit. A defensive uh, player read it very well, made a great play. Swan, a uh, preseason All-Ivy performer and had an interception against Georgetown last week. The Big Green routing the Hoyas. Derek Kyler, this is his second career start against Georgetown, 15 to 21, a touchdown and an interception, a sophomore. This is his second start, his first one on the road. A little pistol set for Dartmouth. The give to the running back quickly and pounding his way into the secondary of Holy Cross is Miles Smith, the number two back behind Rashad Cooper, who had a big game in week one. Yeah, this is against the wall against for Holy Cross. You gotta try to hopefully hold it to a field goal attempt or less here. And it's quickly back in the shotgun for Derek Kyler. Some shifting guys around, a couple of tight ends in Connor Rempel and Jake Guidon. A handoff going to Smith. And he's got a couple, it'll be short of first down yardage. Yeah, Andy, that little motion doesn't look like much. What they're trying to do to see if the defense is playing man-to-man -man coverage, that's really what all that is. They go back to the same uh, formation they started with. Third down, call it two for the Big Green. First possession after the interception by their defense. Calling it out is Kyler. Now he's going to check and change the play. Four receivers set with Miles Smith, the running back, in the backfield. Might be a run to the right here. And the give is to Smith. He's got a hole. He barrels forward towards the 27. He's going to have a first down, and they'll move the chains. Yeah, Andy, so what they're doing right there, they're looking for the Holy Cross front, and uh, they figure wherever there's a hole, they're going to try to run. That's why you say the running back switch sides like that, just running a zone play, uh, cross handoff. And now Smith gets a breather, and Rashad Cooper, who had 112 yards in the win over Georgetown for Dartmouth, is in the backfield with Kyler. For Cooper, it was his first ever 100-yard game. Rempel, the tight end, in motion. The give is to Cooper. Cooper, up the middle, has got a seam, and he's inside the 15. Good pickup on first down, about nine on the play. Yeah, Coach Chesney was right. There's a significant difference up front with the offense line and defense line. Dartmouth is very big up front. So you'll probably see Holy Cross make some adjustments, maybe uh, send some pressure or do some slanting, things like that, to try to offset the uh, difference in size. Big green, huge up front. The left tackle is Matt Kasky. He's a preseason All-American. And the Kilcommons brothers in the middle of that offensive line. The give is to Cooper. Cooper goes right up the middle. He's going to have a first down as he pushes just towards the 10-yard line. It'll be first down coming for the Big Green. Kasky, the All-American, is the left tackle, a senior, but look at that experience up front. Patrick Kilcommons and his brother John, the twins, right up the middle there. Rashad Cooper, the starting tailback, and Drew Honeycutt, Hunter Hagdorn, is back this week. So they have some experience in that receiving core as well, but it's been all on the ground so far. Smith back in the game at tailback. He gets the ball, running behind that left side and fighting for a couple, maybe down to the seven yard line. Call it three on the play, it'll be second and goal coming. 
and a Crusader down on the field, a quick whistle. We'll get the trainers out to check. There's Miles Smith, he had 51 yards and a touchdown against Georgetown in week one. The Crusader who is down is Ryan Brady and that is a big problem if that is a serious look. There's Mark Ebo up front with Jake McCardle, Neil Voister, Forster and Teddy Capsis. Brady, the All-American linebacker, and Cullen Honahan, the freshman in the middle of that defense. Damian Baker, Corey Stefanik, Joe Lang, who's come on big in that secondary with Chris Riley and Josh Hicks. Good news is Brady is up under his own power and back into that defensive huddle. So yeah, he's so going to take a playoff. So I don't want to lose him, man. Especially the way we, oh, Tom is trying to run the football, you know. And Brady has 40 tackles in three games. Wow. He is Jeez. nine tackles for a loss and a couple of sacks. He is... As advertised, the man in the middle of that defense. So Dobbin has been nothing fancy here. They're just coming up running zone right at him, uh, trying to take advantage of the size. So uh, they'll probably continue to do that. Hopefully Holy Cross gets to my third down. Yeah, trying to impose their will up front. So far that line has had some success. Smith is in the backfield. And he gets the ball and he is wrapped up. Good pressure and penetration by the Crusader defense. Getting there first, looked like Forster. The big fella in the middle. Yeah, I think you'll see him throw the ball right now, Andy. It'll be a third and eight coming. Or so he lost a yard on the play. Neil Vorster came in with ten tackles and a sack. One of those big guys up the middle. Now you have to look for a guy like Hunter Hagdorn at the top of the screen. Came into the year with a hundred catches through two seasons with the big green. Missed game one. Cooper in the backfield with Kyler. Kyler looks back, doesn't have much, he's gonna have to throw it away, a flag flies, it came right at the line of scrimmage. Hopefully they'll be holding, a decline if it is. Yep. It is holding against the big green. It's a great holding. job by Holy Cross defense. Number 66 on up the there. offense, that penalty is declined. Will be fourth down. Jeff Gray, our re referee this afternoon, and the Crusader defense gets a hold. They'll bring on the freshman kicker in Connor Davis to try to get three points out of this for Dartmouth. You're right, the momentum stopper there by the Crusader defense. Here is Davis. He was two of three in his first ever start in Division I, a highly touted recruit out of Florida. And the kick is up. And it is no good. He missed it, and the Crusader defense pitches a shutout on wow. that short field. That's a great win there for Holy Cross defense. So now hopefully they get something going on offense. Now they'll bring that offense out. And, you know, an interception right off the bat. The last couple of weeks, those had turned into points. So maybe if you're Holy Cross, you take something from that and try to move forward now on the offensive side. Jeff Wade, as we looks like we have a timeout on the field as the Crusader offense will huddle up. We'll take a timeout with them. You're watching Holy Cross Football on Charter TV3. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. With the tremendous growth of life sciences both globally and locally, we've dedicated our resources to build a strong, knowledgeable and responsive team to meet the insurance and risk management needs of this dynamic industry. Our personal alliance team will make sure your home, your car, your personal belongings and most importantly your family are protected. The Sullivan Group has the resources, the carriers and the coverage to protect you and your business. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. 
our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Welcome, welcome back. Crusaders offense on the field for their second possession. Ball spotted at the 20 yard line after the missed field goal and Jeff Wade gives the ball off to Miles Alexander. Alexander cuts it back, a flag flies over the 20. Pickup of a yard on the play, we'll check the penalty. Unfortunately, it's probably gonna be holding Andy and that's a big, you know, you go from second and seven to first and 20. Holding, yeah. number six and three of the offense. 10 yard penalty, we're main first down. That is the call, and you know, as big as the offensive line is for Dartmouth, the defensive line, they don't get cheated either. Rocco DeLeo, David Chalmers, Jackson Perry right in the 300 pound range. They're all 6'3". They are prototype D linemen, and they're tough to block. They did not have a sack Dartmouth in week one against Georgetown, but they put some pressure on the quarterback and limited the Hoyas to just over 100 yards in total offense. So they got it done up there in the, in the trenches. Yeah, you gotta be careful down here, right up next to your end zone. Probably a, some of a safe running play, I'm assuming. Alexander is the tailback. And he gets the give up the middle. Able to get the ball just past the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on the play. Brian Foley, Brett Body, Jack Bowler, Rory Costello, Jackson Dennis up front for Holy Cross. Alexander, the starting tailback. Derek Mountain, the tight end. Blaze Bell, Richie D. Nicola, Martin Dorsey among the guys you'll see in the Crusader receiving core. Second and long, you're playing behind the sticks. Yeah, I'm going to go empty here. Five receivers set. Wade checks it. Dartmouth looks like they're gonna bring some pressure from the outside. They just bring four, but it came and they hit the receiver does Wade. Out close to the 20. That looks like Gilliam, the freshman, making his first grab of the day. Got it back to Third and long, third and 10 coming. Up front, there's DeLeo, Chalmers, and Perry. Look at that, 283, 300, 300. They are enormous. Up front is Dartmouth, truly the big green. Jake Moen is one of the top guys with Jack Trainer, one of the top tacklers back in the FCS, his trainer in that linebacking core. Nigel Alexander up the middle. Isaiah Swan already has an interception in this one, and he is an all Ivy guy and the reigning defensive player of the week in the Ivy League. Player down for the Crusaders at the moment, we believe to be Rory Costello, who is the right guard. Can ill afford to lose any of these big guys when you have the, the size on the other side. Very true. Hey, Andy, I noticed when they went empty there, um, you may see Holy Cross at some point run a quarterback draw um, because there was five on four. They, they actually emptied the box with the linebacks. Everybody went to coverage. so. Might be something to look for down the road. Jeff Wade did uh, show he could move his feet last week. Had a couple of big runs late in the game in the win over Yale. The comeback victory. As Costello comes off gingerly. And the Crusaders Face a third and 10 now for Jeff Wade, a four receiver set with Miles Alexander in the backfield. Wade barking out the signals. Now he's gonna look to the sideline and check. Dartmouth showing like they're gonna bring a linebacker here on the near side and backing him off. And they bring just four. The handoff is to Alexander. Good blocking on the exterior. Alexander out out to the 25. Uh, Safe call by the Crusaders. They'll be short and they'll bring on the punting team. The helmet flies off of one of the players. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad call, Andy. You know, you just had a great big stop on defense. You know, you don't want to get too fancy and turn the ball over again. You know, sometimes a punt is okay. That's where the penalty kills you. You got the 10 yards would have had a first down, and, yeah. but because of the penalty, you don't have a first down. Crusaders have Cody Wilkinson back to punt. And Wilkinson, a high kick, not long. It's going to hit at the 46. Flag does fly. And it'll be down there by the long snapper, probably Jack Dixon. Probably blocking the back, I'd imagine. 30-yard punt, check the penalty. 
And it should move Dartmouth back a little bit. As they check it, our, again, our official is Jeff Gray. So Dartmouth came out, they really ran the ball every play. So we'll see if they continue to try to do that or maybe open up a little bit more. Holding, number 19 on Dartmouth. It'll be a 10 yard penalty and force from the end of the play. First down. Helps the Crusaders a bit with field position. Dartmouth though gets good field position after their defense looks impressive for their second series. You know, again, getting off to a good start early. They do practice so much tempo at Holy Cross. Tempo on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball. You know, sometimes you're up against a mountain and that's the, it seems like it's the case at least early right now yeah. with Dartmouth. These guys are big. Right. Well, you've got to just kind of weather the storm a little bit, you know, test each other out here, you know, see what they like to do. And basically they've been pretty basic on offense, just coming straight ahead at them. So now this is uh, his second series, see what happens. Kyler has Rashad Cooper in the backfield and a four receiver set for the big green. Now Cooper goes in motion. And they're throwing, it's Hunter Hagdorn on the outside and Hagdorn with his first catch. It's dragged out of bounds at the 40, just over the 40, maybe six yards on the play for Hagdorn. Very impressive there. You see Brady go all the way sideline to sideline and they had to make the tackle. It's, it's a heck of a play by an inside linebacker. And good to see him back after the injury early on. Hunter Hagdorn came in. He's in the top 20 in career yards as a receiver at Dartmouth. And he's playing for his wide receiver coach, Dave Shula who was an all-time great at Dartmouth and a former NFL head coach, son of the legendary Don Shula. This is the outside. It's complete over the 45-yard line to Drew Estrada. And Estrada making his first grab of the year. He's out to the 48-yard line. Yeah, I don't think there was a run pass option. I think there was just a play action pass there. And uh, again, trying to stretch the field. They go wide left the first play, wide right the second. Tight ends in the game now. So now it's first and 10. For Dartmouth, Hagdorn in motion, top of your screen. Kyler fakes the give, he's got a man deep downfield, wide open and complete. I think that's Honeycutt down to the 10 yard line. Drew Honeycutt, who had a big game in week one, comes out, makes a big catch. He had a big catch. Again, yeah, he's very good design to play there. Play little play action, have the back on a flat, and then they, they had the receiver go in motion, they switched positions, and uh, he ran a skinny post, threw it right on time. Nice, Third, nice football play. 39 yard throw and catch for the big green. And they've got a first down inside the Crusader 15 yard line. Spotted them down at the 13. And now those big tight ends start moving around again for Dartmouth. In a two tight end set, they fake the give. Now they throw to one of the tight ends to the outside. He skips a man, has a couple of yards there. It's JJ Jones. Yeah, J.J. Jones and Jake Guidon in the game. I'm assuming, Andy, that the, the offensive coordinator for Dominic has scripted the plays. Uh, they came out, they ran the ball the first six plays, now they threw the ball the next, next, next four, so. Trying to keep Holy Cross defense off balance, for sure. And they're moving again, deep inside Crusader territory. Ball spotted at the six, second and three coming. Smith is in the backfield now with Kyler. To run to the left. Pass again. Kyler's throwing. He's got Smith in the flat. Nice Met one-on-one -on -one and a good defensive stop by the Crusaders secondary. That was Damian Baker out there with the initial stop. Yeah, it's a great play here. Coming up, reading the play. Coming up, really good form tackle. Then uh, he has some uh, friends come and help him. It's a great play. Big play here, Andy, on third down. Try to, again, hold him to a field goal attempt. Get a game of football. It's not how many yards you get, Andy. It's how many points you get. So yeah. you can give up some yards, and if you, you know, hold tough in the red zone, that's a great job on defense. Big third down for the Holy Cross defense. Four receivers set. Man in motion for the big green. Kyler, he's going to throw. Looking for Estrada, and it's incomplete. Crusaders had it bottled up pretty well. They sure did. Great job on defense there again. And a fourth down, and it looks like the kicking unit coming on again for Dartmouth. Wind is swirling a little bit, depends on the uh, the moment. 
whether it's behind or in the face of the kicker, Connor Davis, whose dad Judd was a Luke Groza Award winner at the University of Florida in 1993. Trying his second attempt, the kick is up and this one is good. And Dartmouth has a three to nothing lead. Crusaders will try to get it going when we come back. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done, I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank, we take banking personally. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident, before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Hi, I'm Mike Demers, General Sales Manager here at Berterra Nissan in Auburn. We'll give you the best price and leave you happy every single time. Our local team is ready to provide you with an unparalleled customer experience. Save $6,000 off MSRP on a brand new 2018 Nissan Rogue Model S. I want to invite you to come down and experience the number one Nissan dealership for sales, service and parts in Central New England. Berterra Nissan, Route 20, Auburn, Massachusetts. Everyone knows about the Holy Cross BC rivalry, but the Holy Cross Dartmouth rivalry is just as noteworthy. This is the 81st meeting between the two teams, Dartmouth holding the slight advantage in the series. And the Big Green come into this game winning five of their last meetings between uh, the, two, two, the two schools. Look home. Thank you. Thank you, Wilson. And it is a long rivalry. It goes back to 1903. Davis kicking it away to Gilliam, and Gilliam at the five with speed out over the 20, and battling and into a pile at about the 24 yard line. It was a 11 yard return. And you'd like to give a quick shout out to Holy Cross. Uh, today is uh, Worcester Public School Appreciation Day here at Holy Cross. All the, any employee at Worcester Public Schools could have th two couple complimentary tickets to come see the game. I think it's a class move by Holy Cross, and I'm sure Superintendent Maureen Benender is all for that. She's uh, Done a great job here in Worcester, and so that's, ni that's a nice collaboration with Worcester Public Schools and Holy Cross. Yeah, it's a big deal for Holy Cross, a big deal for Bob Chesney, I know, as well, and Tom Gilmore and past uh, groups did it before as well, but it's certainly a, an element of giving back and community support here with the teams at Holy Cross. Quick pitch out to Miles Alexander, and Alexander has to cut it back because Dartmouth had that strung out pretty well. He's able to get a yard on the play. Yeah, Holy Cross just uh, seems content just to try to get to the perimeter. Uh, you might want to see them maybe run a little bit. I know they're very big up front, but uh, maybe try to, uh, you know, run the ball a little bit more inside. Bunch set here on the near side. Crusaders in the shotgun. Quick hitter to Tenio Ieni. And Ieni is stopped for no gain, and he was met quickly by Nigel Alexander, the one of the linebackers, and they've got a good group in the middle there. Yeah, they really took the ball really well there. So third and long for Holy Cross. Spotted back at the original line of scrimmage, it looks like. Third and 10 coming. Jeff Wade was able to move that offense so well last week. Still feeling his way out here against Dartmouth. Shotgun, quick hitter, oh, and he is drilled. There's two flags flying. Might be targeting. One in the middle of the field as Gilliam was hit high, and another one near the other side of the field. We'll see. All right, it looks like this one will go against Dartmouth. And there's two oh, no. penalties on the play. There's, there's a legal man downfield. It's against Holy Cross. Oh. But it looks like they didn't call the other foul. Holy Cross. That's it, just one penalty huh. on the play, and it was a legal man downfield declined. Crusaders will have to punt. 
Well, it was a tough shot in the middle. The only reason I thought it might have been a targeting call was because the flag came down right exactly. at that spot. I, I felt the same. I felt the same. I didn't really I see if he got hit in the head, but the flag flew as soon as he hit him. I agree with you. Yeah. And it's possible that they conversed and took that flag away. Crusaders send the punting unit out, and Bob Chesney needs to get some of his personnel out there. Corey Stefanik racing out as well as Wilkinson will kick. Saders had men in motion as that punt is high in the sky, and Hunter Hagdorn calls for a fair catch right at the 34-yard line. Pretty good kick that time for Wilkinson. Flag on the field, way on the other side. 42-yard kick, no return. There is a flag, as you mentioned. And we'll have to check it here to see. As the long conversations with our officiating crew here in the early going. Already, Holy Cross, slow start again. Illegal formation on Holy Cross. More than four players in the backfield. Dockman elects to have the ball re-kicked after a five-yard penalty. It will remain fourth down. Yeah, it was a good punt, so they'll have to re-kick it. See, Andy, this is what, it's in football what you call your hidden yardage. So all of a sudden, Dockman had the ball on the 33. We'll see where they end up now. So if they gain anything past the 33, this is what they call hidden yardage. You have a penalty mm. where you give up, you know, yardage where you, should, you shouldn't have to, you know. And that just, I'm sure Coach Chesney's not very happy with that. I mean, that's just a, a focus penalty. You got to make sure, you know, you have enough people on the line of scrimmage. You got to have seven. The numbers are staggering so far. Crusaders have been outscored 89 to 14 in the first half of game so far. That, Dartmouth brought the pressure and. Derek Ng gets the kick away that time. It takes a Dartmouth bounce, and the Big Green will have it inside the Holy Cross territory, right about the 38-yard line. I See, that's why I hate to hate to be, you know, there's, there's a difference of 20 yards right there. a huge swing yep. after that five-yard penalty. That was just a 19-yard punt. And it was Ng kicking that time. Wilkinson had had the first two punts. So now we'll have a timeout on the field as... Dartmouth has the ball in great field position again. Trying to extend this uh, first quarter lead over Holy Cross. Again, Dartmouth's had the ball twice deep inside Holy Cross territory. Only three points to show for it. Crusader defense has played well with their backs against the wall. They really have. And just, you just look at the starting field position alone. I mean, twice Dartmouth started in, deep in Holy Cross territory. And the other time, I think they started the 35. And Holy Cross hasn't. Started, I think, past their 25. So, you know, when you think about it, Andy, you, you, the difference of that, say you start the ball at the 50 compared to the 20, you got to, in theory, make three more first downs. And that's a lot at any level, yeah. especially if you're playing a real good defensive team like Dartmouth. So. Now, the Crusaders unveiled these new jerseys this week, these black jerseys with the silver. They almost look like the uh, Oakland Raiders. Are they purple, the numbers? Right are, now. They, are they purple? It's like a, they're a like silver, silver with a purple kind of around it. Kyler is 5 of 7, 59 yards as he gets set to come back out. But the Crusaders, you know, they, they always they have a spark. They've been so active on social media. And, you know, we talked about it last week with uh, Yale head coach Tony Reno talking about the Holy Cross football name is out there more. Bob Chesney is getting that, that name out there. They're hearing it more on the recruiting trail with some of these high, highly touted prospects that Ivy League teams and other Division I teams are chasing. Now Holy Cross is chasing a lot of those same guys as aggressively and, and maybe having some success, some big numbers. Looks like coming in to Holy Cross next year. Here's a handoff to Rashad Cooper as we're back underway. Cooper drags the pile. Inside the 35-yard line of Holy Cross, Honahan in on the stop for the Crusaders, the freshman. Yeah, I think yeah, Dama's game plan is to you know see if we can pound Holy Cross, and then you know when they come out uh, the last series, they really opened up in the passing game. But I think their their uh, game plan is to really run the football. Cooper has three carries, 15 yards in the early going. Coming up on three and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. The give, it keeps it that time on the quarterback option back up the middle. He got to the 31, so pick up a three on the play for Kyler. First time he's kept it on that little option look. Really good with the ball though, Andy. They made a great fake. A lot of Holy Cross players followed the running back, and that's really what you want in that football player. 
Crusaders bring in Jake McCardle, some size in the middle on third and three. Defense looking to make another stop in their own end. Kyler, handoff, no, he get, keeps it himself. Teddy Caps has destroyed the jet sweep and Kyler has the first down, it looks like at the 28 he does. It was a great scheme by Holy Cross. They really had, had the, 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 I think it might've been a safe door to come, some defensive end actually come up and meet the uh, jet sweep at the point of attack and then the quarterback made a great read and pulled for and, a first down. And the runner just got leveled by Teddy Kapsis. That's sacrificing the body for the play right there. Yeah, for sure. First and 10 for Dartmouth at the Crusader, 28. On a Rempel, the tight end. And the give is to Cooper. Big hole up the middle. Cooper takes on a tackler and then runs in to Alex Johnson, who drags him down. But a pretty good pickup by Cooper. Yeah, they're very content just to run the ball between the tackles for the most part, you know, with the sides advantage. And uh, like I said, Holy Cross has been real tough down in this area of the field. So hopefully they can bow up and uh, stop him to a field goal attempt. Seven-yard carry gives Cooper four carries for 22 yards. He averaged seven yards a carry last week in a win over Georgetown. It's in the backfield. They bring Hunter Hagdorn in motion. The give is to Cooper. Big hole on the left side. And Cooper's got a first down inside the 15-yard line. He had a just massive hole set up there by his offense. Yeah, there's a line. that's a nice play to fake the jet sweep around on the backside. You know, Andy, the other problem with this is this is really taking a toll on the uh, Crusader defense. You know, I mean, they've been on the field for the most of the first quarter, and uh, you know, it's not really a hot day, but you know, you want to. It takes a lot of energy to continue to play defense. Looked like it might have been Zach Sammartino out there pulling with a big block on the edge. Seven first downs already for Dartmouth. This time it's Kyler, the quarterback, keeping it. Takes a hit from Hanahan and spins for maybe two. And they, uh, Dartmouth, this is the area that you mentioned they kind of have bogged down a little bit inside the red zone. Yep. Crusaders backs against the wall for the third time here in the quarter. I wouldn't be surprised to see some type of play action pass here. They've really run the ball down here trying to uh, impose their will. Miles Smith, the tailback, in a three receiver set. And Kyler is going to hand up. it off to Smith. Blocks up the middle, but it closes quickly. Chris Riley and company. Getting to the ball carrier for Holy Cross. Riley, the free safety, playing in the box, making a nice play there. Third down and long coming for Dartmouth. Yeah, in comes a receiver set. They may take it to the quarter, but they'll, they'll come up with four receivers this time. That's Lou Pierce. Buddy Tevens is content to do. We are through one quarter of play. Dartmouth on top of Holy Cross by a score of three to nothing. Holy Cross football is back in Worcester. Don't miss family fun and Division I football right in your backyard. Tickets start at just $15. Visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets or call 1-844-GO-CROSS. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers, all to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Harrington Physician Services specializes in the understanding, prevention, and management of complex sports injuries and athletic rehabilitation. Whether you need care for a torn rotator cuff or ACL, our board-certified physicians are here to serve you. We offer comprehensive physical therapy and rehabilitation in Charlton, Southbridge, and Webster, and an on-site radiology partnership with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. To learn more, go to HarringtonHospital.org. Harrington Healthcare System, compassionate, quality care. All right, welcome back. Start of the second quarter. Andy Lacombe, Terry Wallace, Brenna Wilson with you from Fit and Field. Where Dartmouth has a three to nothing lead, but this is their third trip inside the red zone 
of the first half. And just the one Connor Davis field goal to show for it. Third and long, again. They send Honeycutt in motion. Four receivers sent for Dartmouth. Fake the give, Kyler to throw. Looking for Honeycutt, Great knocked play. away. And blocked and knocked down at the very last minute by Akeem Walcott. What a play. And good to have Akeem Walcott healthy and back on the field for Holy Cross. Great defensive plays. Notice how he uses his left hand there and uh, knocks the ball away. Textbook defensive football. Now a flag is flown here. Sideline warning maybe. I hope. It appears to be a sideline warning. You're right. As he backed up the Crusader line. And now here is Davis. This one from 28 yards away. Davis, one of two in the early going. This one is up, and it's no good. The Crusader defense gets a hold again. Keen Walcott comes off the field fired up, and the Crusader defense comes away with another big ser series in the red zone. Wow. This is what their, their MO has been, though, and uh, you know, you throw the BC game out the window. This has been the MO. The Crusaders have hung around, hung around, hung around, and then seem to come alive later in ball games. Well, I'll tell you, and you look at this, you almost look at this as a plus 18 points because, you know, they're in the red zone three times. You could, they could score three touchdowns for 21. They've only given up three, so that's a great job by Holy Cross. And a little bit different than the Yale game where it was 21 to nothing in similar situations. The give is, no, it's a keeper from Wade, and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Way just mushed under by that line at the bottom of the pile. And the big fella, David Schomer's 99, 300-pounder. Yeah, they're going to have to probably take a shot down the field or something like that. They're really bottling up this short stuff, the inside run. Holy Cross credited with just eight offensive plays in the first quarter. That was number nine right there. Yeah, I was looking at the time of possession. Unbelievable. Heavily in favor of the Big Green. 11 minutes to just under four for Holy Cross through one quarter. Way downfield, intercepted. Intercepted, it's Isaiah Swan again. Second of the day, third of the year. And the Big Green have another turnover. Holy Cross trying to stretch the field, do right. something a little different. Didn't work out. Yeah, I think you maybe see them try to stay away from him right now. He's made two really good plays, and again, uh, Wade, you know, his head's looking where he's throwing, and, uh, you know, sometimes a defender, that's, a, that's an easy read for that. Isaiah Swan, the kind of reigning right Ivy in. League defensive player of the week, doesn't want to relinquish the title. He's got two picks in the early going. So, again, you know, Holy Cross up against it again. Third, third time they've started in their own uh, Holy Cross territory. How many times can the defense make plays here in the first half? Well, earlier this week, Bob Chesney told us Jeff Wade clearly the starter, and he earned it with his performance against Yale. He's off to a tough start here, though, in his second start. Kyler looking downfield. Looking for Honeycutt with inside position. Nice play. Knocked away at the last minute. And it was Baker going up and getting it for Holy Cross. Two stellar defensive back plays in a row here for Holy Cross. Uh, it's a good well-thrown ball. And uh, you, can't, you can't play much better defense than that. Damian Baker one-on-one -on -one with Honeycutt. A couple a of upperclassmen going head-to-head. -head. And now second and 10 for Dartmouth. Kyler's had tremendous projection, time to throw the ball in the early going. This is the handoff to Smith. Smith with some room. Johnson and company drag him down around the 30. Looks like Joe Lang in on the play as well. The sophomore is coming off a big week, the second leading tackler for the Crusaders. Yeah, big, another big play. It's a lot of big plays for the defense so far in this game, and they've really been up to the task for the most part. Third and three, a little more forgiving for Dartmouth uh, than the third and seven, third and eights they've been facing in the red zone. Yeah, they're in their run set. They got a couple tight ends. J.J. Jones and Guido in the tight ends. They run their side nice. and they are stacked up. And it was 
Baker and the Crusaders coming up with another play. They brought the run blitz, it looked like. Yeah, that's a great call, great play. Uh, they're in no man's land now, Andy. Not, they're not going to try a 50-yard field goal, so I, I, I assume they'll probably go for it here. Look at, what, got, look at what Joe Lang's giving up there with those big guys pushing them. Took great up job two blockers. So they got their quad set, four wide receivers. They're looking to throw the football here. This is fourth and five. The only other thing, too, Andy, you could see quarterback draw here. He's, looks like he's a pretty good runner, but they'll probably throw the ball. And they have Kalen Parker, the third running back, in the backfield with him. Kyler to throw. Quick one. He's got a first down. He hit Estrada inside the 25, down to the 24, 23-yard line for the first. Yeah, that's a good call. Just a quick slant from the slot receiver. Very hard to cover, and he threw right on time. It's a sophomore quarterback in his second start. Pretty good poise. Very difficult to cover there, that, that slot slant. And so a new set of downs for Dartmouth. First and 10 at the Crusader 23. Kyler, the give is to Parker. To the outside, gets outside of Brady. Parker with speed, a flag flies. First down and more, but penalty coming from behind the play from the referee generally against the offense. Holding on the four in the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the That's foul. a big penalty there. First down. That hold came against the receiver, Estrada, on the outside and negates a big play and what would have been a first and goal for Dartmouth. Here's Buddy Tevens, a Massachusetts native. Has time not only at his alma mater, but at Head coach at Stanford, Tulane in Maine. Actually, Andy, I, uh, I, uh, when I was at AIC, my second game of the season, we played Maine, and he, he was at, he was the coach there. So that was interesting. He's been a great coach here, especially at Dartmouth. I won't tell, I won't tell the viewers the two years he was at Maine. That would date my uh, <laughs> colleague Terry Wallace here. Give away your age. There's a quick hitter to Hunter Hagdorn. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I was eight, though, I will say that, when he was at Maine, Buddy Tevens. I was just an eight-year-old. Hagdorn's second catch. Hagdorn's on pace to have 200 career catches, which would rank him uh, highly among all the all-time list. I like that call there, though. You know, you don't try to get the ball back, you know, 17, 18 yards, get 10 of it, and now you're in, you're in pretty good situation with the sticks. Second and seven. And he cut the receiver in motion. Give us to Parker. Parker doesn't find much that time. And he runs into a wall of black jerseys at the, at the 20. We'll bring third and long coming up. No gain on the play. It's like deja vu, Andy. Every time it seems like it's third and, you know, right down in their territory. And they've done a great job thus far. I, I wouldn't be surprised, Andy, if they don't get the first down here. Instead of kicking a field goal, they may go for it. Yeah, he looks like the field goal kick is struggling a little bit, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets the fourth down to go for it. Third and seven. Ball is on the nose of the 20-yard line as Kyler checks the play back on the sideline. Anything inside the 20 on third and long has been tough. This one's right on the 20 for Dartmouth. Crusaders showing pressure. Looks like they're bringing the house. They do. They bring a lot. They get to the quarterback a little late, and Hagdorn, the pass behind him. Good pressure by the Crusaders that time. And it's fourth down. See what they do here. I, 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 I'm assuming they're going to go for it. And yeah, they're going to keep that offense right on the field. Davis, and it's just one for three in field goals here. And missed one here to the open side where the wind is blowing squarely in the player's face. So you're throwing into the wind. You're kicking in the wind. A timeout is going to be taken by Buddy Tevens. The Crusaders defense rallying again. Can they make another stop here in the early going? As they'll. Well, Andy, I guess if air. you told me that Dartmouth would be in your red zone four times and the score would be three to nothing Dartmouth, I would take that. Oh, no question. So uh, you can build on that, but offensively, they got, they got to come up with something, get some first downs, get the defense a break here, and turn, turn the field around. Yeah, the offense, is it's been a second-half offense uh, the first three weeks of the season. It's not a formula they draw up or they, they are trying for, but it, right. situations are what they are. Defense has been a claw 
grip, you know, just dig in, claw, fight your way, scratch whatever you can do to, to oh, hang on. Change their mind, well. going field goal. I went, I'd be weary of a fake here. The wind has died down completely. This would be a 38 yarder for Davis. And a timeout called by Bob Chesney. He tried to get the timeout before a flag came in. There's a substitution penalty. It would have been against the Holy Cross Crusaders. Okay, they had 12 players, Andy. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Good, so great timeout. Heads up by the Crusaders sideline as the referee and his team confers again. And they're gonna grant the Crusaders a timeout. That's what Jeff Gray is telling us. So it would not have been first down yardage, but certainly on fourth and seven or fourth and two would have given yeah, Dartmouth another opportunity to think about going for it. Yeah, I think they definitely would have gone for it if it was fourth and two, for sure. But you know, as a coach, this is a tough one. You wanna give your, your field goal kicker confidence. So you wanna, you know, hopefully you can boot this through for them, but hopefully for us, uh, he doesn't boot it through. Now Davis. Did hit a 38 yarder in the game, the win over Georgetown in week one. He has this kind of range. Wind has died down completely. It'll be from the right hash mark. Snap is down, kick is up, kick is deep, and it is good. Big kick there for Davis. He gets off a little mini schneid. It's six to nothing, Dartmouth. Holy Cross football is back in Worcester. Don't miss family fun and Division I football right in your backyard. Tickets start at just $15. Visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets or call 1-844-GO-CROSS. Harrington Physician Services specializes in the understanding, prevention, and management of complex sports injuries and athletic rehabilitation. Whether you need care for a torn rotator cuff or ACL, our board-certified physicians are here to serve you. We offer comprehensive physical therapy and rehabilitation in Charlton, Southbridge, and Webster, and an on-site radiology partnership with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. To learn more, go to HarringtonHospital.org. Harrington Healthcare System, compassionate, quality care. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. All right, welcome back. The sun has been replaced by the clouds here in the second quarter, and Holy Cross will line up to receive the ball here, down six to nothing to Dartmouth. Four times in the red zone for the Big Green, and they have just the six points on two Connor Davis field goals. Holy Cross's offense has not moved the ball at all. If you had any type of gadget trickery on a return here, it might be a good time, like a reverse or something just to kind of try to get a big play. Crusaders have 17 total yards to this point in the contest. Davis to kick. He gets into one. It's going to be Gilliam from the six. Spencer Gilliam coming right back up the middle. And he is met in a nice tackle there on the special team side from Tanner Cross. The linebacker from Dartmouth. Well, again, if you're Holy Cross, no need to panic. You're only down a score. You know, you've done a great job on defense, but you've got to try to get something going here. All right, the ball is spotted at the 23, calling an 18-yard return for Gilliam. Jeff Wade in the offense coming back out. This time you have Derek Mountain, the tight end slash receiver, split up to the top of the screen in a four receiver set. Wade to throw. Quick one to Blaze Bell. Nice way to start right out at the 29 yard line. Bell is wrestled out of bounds. The referee thought about pulling the flag, he did not. 
That's a good play, though. That's, you know, six yards. Now you're in a, a positive situation, second and four. I'd like to see them get uh, Blaze more involved here. He is the leading receiver for Holy Cross. His Blaze belt came into the game with 13 catches for 123 yards. Second and four coming. And the give is to Miles Alexander. Alexander pushing for yardage over the 30. Uh, 31 will be a couple yards short. Pick up of two on the play. Last week, Coach, the first time that Holy Cross this season had more passing yards than rushing yards, a complete opposite of what we've seen over the, the well, the Peter Puyall's era where the passing game was king, and even before that. Right. Crusaders have had some success running the football. Last week, Jeff's Wade, Jeff Wade's arm stretched the field a little bit more and opened up the passing game. Third and three, Peter Oliver is now the tailback. He gets the call. Oliver pushing towards the pylon. He's gonna be close. Looks like maybe a half a football short. They spot him at the 32, but Ollie, the St. John's grad, a big power back. Fourth and maybe less than a yard here. That's a good call. You got to punt the ball there. I mean, you know, he your defense has been great. Yeah, no, I like the idea. He thought about it, but it's just risk and reward. You know, you just uh... low snap in corrals it and drives this punt to Hunter Hagdorn. Catches it at the 30, and he's going right out of bounds there. Nicely done by the Crusader coverage group. We're back after the break. Dartmouth on top, six to nothing. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values, our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. Committed to our community. We live here, we work here, we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. Doors. Every door is different, every door unique, and each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place, a bank where we listen to you and find answers, all to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. Our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Now here comes the Dartmouth offense. Last week, the defense of Dartmouth gave up only 112 total yards wow. to Georgetown. This week, they've held Holy Cross without a first down to this point in the game. It's got their offense back out on the field with 8-10 left in the first half. Quick running play. Check if it's Cooper, it is. And uh, Keem Walcott got the first hit on him. Pick up of a few on the play. Hey, just love to have a stop here, maybe turn the field a little bit because the Holy Cross has been in their own end the whole game, you know, and three and out would really do it, do it, do us wondrous here for uh, Holy Cross. Call it five yards for Rashad Cooper. Now it's Miles Smith in the backfield. Yeah, they were a three-man front to play before. Now they're back to the four. Kyler, high snap, gives it off to Smith. Smith, though over the 40, he'll be short of a first down by a couple. Brady, of course. Among the guys near the, near the play, Hanahan there as well, two linebackers. You have a senior and a freshman there, and Brady, the senior, Hanahan, the freshman. Liam Doran is on the two deep this week, a uh, former St. John star, just a freshman. A lot of freshman contributors through the first three weeks into week four for the Crusaders. Third and short coming. And flags fly. Oh, that's a good procedure. Yeah, they were in a double tight end set there. Obviously, we're going to try to run the football. Now they'll probably bring the receivers in. 
be third and uh, seven. Now, Bob Chesney didn't sugarcoat it this week. And 67 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. There's the penalty. He didn't sugarcoat it this week. He was excited that they, they won. They, right. beat, they beat Yale. But uh, he's like, we're a long way from being, in his words, something. Yeah, so he's no. like, he's, you know, it's almost like telling the media, guys, pump the brakes. Right. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to be good. We're just not there yet. Right. And right. it's a process. And uh, they're, they're, their motto is, okay, win or lose, did you get better? Right. No, that's a great point. Here's third screen. and long. And there is the screen to Honeycutt. Honeycutt gets free, and he's going to stumble for a first down as Johnson got the hand on him to trip him up. Good design here. They, they motion it back out to uh, empty, and they come back to the backside for a tunnel screen. And Drew Honeycutt, who had the big game against Georgetown, already been a favorite target here with Hunter Hagdorn on the other side. A lot of experience back. They lost an outstanding quarterback to graduation. There's Kyler losing it, and he's going to make something out of nothing there. They lost uh, Jack Hennigan last year, the outstanding quarterback. But uh, they brought back a lot, a lot of uh, receivers in the offensive line. So there's a plenty of experience for Dartmouth around their sophomore quarterback, Kyler. And the two running backs run very hard, too. So that's mm. a nice uh, compliment of, of, for their offense. They bring three receivers to the near side on second and long. Now Honeycutt in motion. To the top up, to the top. Kyler to throw. Got a man. Sitting down in the zone was Honeycutt. He's got first down yardage in the Crusader territory to the 44 yard line. Yeah, they just ran a scheme where they got 83 came in motion. He ran a uh, go. The, the inside guy ran a hitch and then the back ran to the flat. So quarterback just reads the outside linebacker wherever he doesn't go. That's where he throws the football. Nice read there by the quarterback for Dartmouth. And Kyler found him well. And Dartmouth's in Holy Cross territory again. Every possession, they've been on this side of the field at some point. They're here again, and the give is to Cooper, and Cooper's got a good sized chunk of yardage there on first down. He's inside to the 38-yard line. Five on the play, just about five, four and a half for Cooper. Right back on the line of scrimmage. No huddle here, but it's a uh, Deliberate no huddle. Right. When the line looks big from our vantage point, they must be huge <laughs> on the field. They look enormous Good from point. way up here. Kyler's throw is complete to the outside right at the sticks. And that is a freshman there, Zach Bear, a running back, making the play. Interesting. He just walked, he just came into the game and they threw it to him. That might be something to watch. Bear, a freshman running back out of Rumson, New Jersey. Just shy of first down yards, they spot it. So it's third and less than a yard. They're going big. What is that, like an eight tight end set, it seems like? <laughs> and they give it Get up it. the middle, and Short. it's going to be close. Short. Good defensive play and good penetration. Jason Modak, a defensive lineman for Holy Cross. Yeah, that's a great play. Uh, on short yardage plays, you got to get lower than the offensive uh, lineman, and it did here, and they blew up the play, which is good. You'll definitely see Dobbins go for it here. We have that number right, Modak. Freshman out of New Jersey, making a big play, fourth and short. They give it up the middle. It is going to be just enough, it looks like. Oh. Smith may just have gotten it. And they'll move the sticks. Ryan Brady in on that stop. Good effort by Holy Cross. Not by much, I'll tell you. Good hard run. Here they are at the point of attack. Just they didn't need very much. That was the problem on that one. Wow, Crusaders have a freshman on the defensive line now. First and 10 from the 32 of Holy Cross. Coming up on three minutes to play, first half. Kyler to throw, and that's a quick little hitter to Cooper, wrestled down at the 25 by Brady. Again, good read by Kyla there, just a check down. You know, Holy Cross had good coverage uh, deeper in the secondary and he just dumped it off and 
play doesn't look like much, but it's seven yards. Brady is an 11, roughly about an 11 tackle a game pace right now. He is putting up numbers here sure, in his sure. senior Big year. pressure here. Crusaders bring the heat. They run, and it is Parker, and he's going to be free to the end zone for the touchdown. Kalen Parker going in, and Dartmouth extends the lead. That's I mean, I don't blame Holy Cross for coming there, but that's the one drawback. If they get through to second level, there's not much there, and it's exactly what happened. They, they block it up well, and uh, Parker, once he got loose, it was, he was into the end zone. Kalen Parker, who had some yardage in the late going in the Georgetown game, goes in for another touchdown. 12 to nothing. They'll try to tack on the extra point with Davis, and the kick is good. 13 to nothing, Dartmouth with 228 left in the half. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. Our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values, our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. Committed to our community. We live here, we work here, we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. Coming up at the half, we speak to Holy Cross women's basketball head coach Bill Gibbons. He'll tell us a little bit about the season coming up as well as his 600th win last year. So be sure to stay with us, guys. All right, Brenna, thank you very much. We'll look forward to that with Coach Gibbons. Always a great time to hear from Coach. The women's basketball team is readying for another season. The men's basketball team as well. And, you know, these seasons blend together for the people up here at Holy Cross, the athletic uh, communications and marketing folks. This is uh, getting into probably one of the busier times of the year for them. For sure. So can Holy Cross put something together here in the final 228, take something to the room, a little momentum anyway, away from Dartmouth. Short kick, Gilliam from the 11. And Gilliam with some speed over the 30. Pretty good position for Holy Cross to start. Yeah, so 223 to go, we like to get some momentum going, but again, you look at it, this game could be 35 to nothing. So it's only 13. So you certainly don't want to make any mistakes here and give the Dartmouth the ball back with a chance to score again in another half. You're getting the ball to start the second half. So, but yeah, try to get at least, try to get a first down, have some momentum going into the locker room. First down would be nice. It would be the first of the game for Holy Cross. Wade has time over the middle and broken up. He was looking for Blaze Bell and it was knocked away by Ryan Rogi. I got to tell you, Andy, these, Secondary people for Dartmouth, they're all over Holy Cross. They, they really cover well. Um, so they're going to have to maybe run some drag passes across the field, make them run with them, whatever like that, some uh, rub passes, something to try to get them off their game because they're, they're right on all over their patterns. Very impressed with their defense. Dartmouth, the only team in the Ivy League to beat Yale last year, and they took some notes, no doubt, on the Yale film when Holy Cross played them a week ago. Screen, Screen out to Alexander, nowhere to go. And he was completely swarmed under by Jack Trainer. And the Dartmouth defense. Yeah, they just, I mean, just swarm into the football. They're not fooling any, anybody, and uh, just, they're just faster than the offensive guys. The block right there, they're well schooled. They, they snuffed that out pretty easily. So now you got to real be, really be careful here. You don't want to throw a pick. You're still, uh, you know, getting the ball to the second half, can regroup. Jack Trainer. One of those all IV guys preseason. Be surprised he just run the ball here. 
Third and 16, Alexander the tailback, and Alexander gets it up the middle. He's going nowhere. He so ran right into the center Dominic of the defense. Yeah. Dominic will call timeout. It was Trainer again who came in and filled and just blew the play up. And the Dartmouth defense, big, physical. And fast. Quick. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a good team. Very good team. You know, Tony Reno, the Yale coach, they were picked number one in the Ivy League. Dartmouth was eight and two a year ago, and they were picked down towards the bottom of the Ivy League. It, is, it is noted quite uh, obviously in the game notes from the Dartmouth athletic communications staff. And they might be playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And Tony Reno told us that they told Kevin Shea that he thought Dartmouth was one of the top three teams above them, above Yale well, in the Ivy League coming into this year. Now, preseason rankings and preseason is preseason. Right. It's what you do on the field. Dartmouth so far pretty impressive. impressive against a couple of Patriot League opponents. So this is Wilkinson now to punt. Dartmouth showing like they might, eh, they're going to back it off now and play for a return. Wilkinson's kick angled away from Hagdorn and spotted down by Gilliam. The 43, a 33-yard kick for the Crusader punter. So 118 left. Dartmouth 13 to nothing lead right now. Now, 13 to nothing, you go to the locker room, you're okay if you're Holy Cross, you held them down. But if you're Dartmouth, you can erase a lot of things that went against your offense with a quick strike here. Right. Well, I'm sure they'll come out in a two-minute set and uh, try to get another score on the board. And uh, like you said, Andy, you know, 13 nothing compared to 20 nothing, huge difference. So right. Holy Cross can, you know, say, hey, we played great on defense. They, they were, they could have had 35. We only held them with 13. And then offense, hopefully, regroup and come up with something and. But this is a huge play for Holy Cross. Right? they got to keep him out of the end zone. Yeah, this first down play is critical. Dartmouth has just one timeout left here in the half. Crusaders with a three-man front. And now a flag flies. It'll be delay a game against the Big Green. Delay of game on the offense, number 15. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Not a lot to cheer for for the Crusader faithful here in the first half, but that was a, a pretty good little nugget there. If, if they can back Dartmouth up on first down, put a little more pressure on them here and keep them out of the scoring column. Kyler looking to throw. Has Honeycutt near side. Right now about the 42, so got some of that yardage back, the penalty yardage. It'll be second down. Yeah, that's the one thing you want to try to do is try to tackle people in, in inbounds if you can. The clock will stop on a, a first down, but you want to try to get the clock moving as much as possible on defense. Yeah, Honeycutt did get out of bounds and stop that clock with 114 left. There's Kyler to throw. Kyler has got a receiver in Cooper on the flat. Cooper is able to get out of bounds. He was just able to get away from Corey Stefanik with no real gain on the play. Yeah, that's good defense, Andy. You know, anytime you get the ball in the back in space, uh, and you make a you know a play for a loss. It's a great defensive football play. So third and ten, 104 left with the great. clock stopped. It's great defense. Big play here. Four receivers for the Big Green. Kyler looking to throw. Went found his first option on the second read, I think, and it's Honeycutt first down yardage to the 42. Looked like he was looking for Honeycutt, looked away from him, and then looked back and found him. First and 10, clock moving 50 seconds in the first half. Kyler downfield, and it's wide of the intended receiver, Dylan Meller. Yeah, you just got to keep everything in front of you. You know, I see they're subbing a few people, keep them fresh, try to get a good pass rush here. Although he's had a pretty clean pocket the whole, whole first half when he's been able to throw the ball. Yeah, not a lot of heat. I think that maybe Crusaders have only gotten maybe one hit on the quarterback in the first half by my count. Here's Kyler to throw. Has a man complete to the outside. That again, the freshman tailback, Bear. 
Yeah, well schooled there, Andy. You know, I mean, it's a little seven-yard play, get out of bounds, takes five seconds. That's that's a good football play for Dominus. You know, they'll, they'll take that. Bring up a third and three at the 35-yard line. Three receivers to the near side for Kyler. Looking, now he's going to tuck it, he's going to run. He's going to get a first down. Brady brings him down with company inside the 30. First and 10 for Dartmouth. Clock stops as they reset the chains. Now it runs again under 35. Uh, Crusaders hurt. trying to get a substitution out. It's going to be a penalty. They're not going to get it. A guy off in time. Quick hitter outside. Complete to Meller. Hicks knocked him out of bounds. There'll be a flag against Holy Cross. A lot happened there. See, the problem, Andy, is when the offensive team does not sub, uh, you know, you have to sub and get the guy off the right. field. If they sub, then the referee will go underneath the center and have them stop until you can sub, too. But Dartmouth did not sub. Crusaders are trying to get a defensive lineman off the field. Clock will be stopped with 25 seconds to play. Already presumably close to field goal range. Substitution violation. Number 42 is the 12th man, did not get off the field before the ball was snapped. It's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. We remain first down. And yeah, they brought a lineman in. They were trying to get Mark, or uh, linebacker in 42. The call was on Hanahan, but they were trying to get Ebo off the field, and he did not get off in time. Yeah, I'm sure the lineman had gassed. They've been on the field the whole half. First and five, balls at the 24, holding cross. Kyler. With time, downfield, tried to find Hagdorn, could not connect. First time, man, you got a little pressure there. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. Crusaders. It has been a long fight to try to get to Kyler. Haven't quite gotten home yet. Jordan Jackson on the field there. Now for Holy Cross in the defensive line. Pocket for Kyler, downfield, back shoulder. Hagdorn incomplete. Good coverage from Hicks on that route. Yep. I tell you, we've complimented the Dartmouth secondary. Well, same thing goes for Holy Cross. They've really been in good positions all day. You can see on the replay here. Back shoulder, like you said, Andy, and he's great, you know, going for the football. Great textbook defensive play. We're very well coached. Josh Hicks doing a nice job. Third and five, 15 seconds left. First half. Figure another five, 10 yards to set up for the field goal at least. Quick hitter out to Cooper, gets away from Brady and he's out of bounds. Uh. With 10 seconds left, he's out of bounds. They spot it at the 17. See those are little things, Andy. There. Andy, you make that tackle there in the field, they gotta call timeout because it's before the sticks. You yeah. know what I mean? And then they, they gotta have to kick a field goal. Now you give him an extra play. Yeah, you get at least one play now. Right. That was a, a big if you're little. Dartmouth, I mean, you, you take a shot here. Absolutely. They're going to the end zone here. 10 seconds, 17 yards away. Kyler, quick hitter underneath to Estrada with room. Estrada fights oh. on a tackle, he's in. It's a touchdown for Dartmouth. And oh. just three seconds left on the clock. Well, big play, they must have a lot of uh, confidence in Estrada because uh, you know they throw it underneath it, but he just ran it through the end zone, ran through a tackle. It's a big drive for Dominic right there in the half. Estrada is a big receiver, and he used his six foot 190 frame there, the Argyle, Texas native, powering his way in. 19 to nothing. Dartmouth now the score. Dartmouth deferred, remember, and they get the ball in the third to start the third quarter. Oh, you're right. Yep. So an unfortunate series of events for Holy Cross here. Dartmouth. Davis, it's through, it's 20 to nothing. Well, hope we can have a little deja vu watching the replay here. I tell you, the quarterback's been very impressive. And see how the wide receivers are blocking downfield. You say it as a coach, you know, blocking, receivers block downfield, turns good plays into touchdowns, and that's an example of that. He feels very comfortable in the pocket. Just a, just a crossing pattern, just running high, putting his head down, finding a nose for the end zone. Now, Kyler is 16 of... 24 coming into that that last pass wow. and uh, pretty good pretty good numbers for him 16 of 24 with a touchdown now for Kyler in his second 
career start. Now, at this point, you know, Holy Cross has been able to wear teams away. You know, again, throw the Boston College game out the window. They've been able to wear teams down. But this size that Dartmouth has, I think you could argue they have worn away with the time of possession and the, the field being slanted in their favor. They have certainly been able to wear, impose their will and wear down Holy Cross a little bit in the first half. Great point, Andy. It takes its toll. It really does. So hopefully they can regroup and come back and have a little deja vu last, like last week. Well, let's see if they kick through. And now it'll be a squib kick taken by an up back and quickly downed there as time expires in the first half. Let's see if they converse about this or if that is, in fact, the half. Two seconds will be put back on the, on the game clock. It was a quick couple of seconds ticking off. Holy Cross will have one play before halftime. Offense will get a chance to come onto the field and see if they can do something or if they just take a knee here and go into the, go into the locker room. Buddy Tevens coming out on the field just to get clarification on the far side. And now here come the Crusaders. They look like they're going to run a play here with three receivers to the near side. Maybe Alexander gets it, though. Well, he'll throw. Jeff Wade downfield. He puts some air under it, and it's another interception. And it looks like it's Swan again. Oh, boy. Third interception of the game ends the first half, and it's 20 to nothing. Dartmouth, three picks for Isaiah Swan. That one was just kind of a Hail Mary type situation for Holy Cross, trying to make something happen before heading to the locker room. Crusaders held without a first down in that first half. Defensively, Dartmouth has been very Stout. Let's go down to the field. Brenna Wilson with Bob Chesney. Coach, time of possession obviously not in your favor. What do you have to do to hopefully get your defense off the field and also get your offense? Well, I think we got to hold on to the ball and we got to do better on first down. They're getting four to seven yards every single first down. Our punting is not good. A lot of things going on here are not very good. We can't tackle, can't get off blocks. Don't look like a very good football team right now. Awesome. Good luck next half. Twenty to nothing, Holy Cross trailing, going to the room, and we'll be back with more at halftime. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody! I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Hi, I'm Mike Demers, General Sales Manager here at Berterra Nissan in Auburn. We'll give you the best price and leave you happy every single time. Our local team is ready to provide you with an unparalleled customer experience. Save $6,000 off MSRP on a brand new 2018 Nissan Rogue Model S. I want to invite you to come down and experience the number one Nissan dealership for sales, service, and parts in Central New England. Berterra Nissan, Route 20, Auburn, Massachusetts. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. High levels of PCE were found in texts around windows and doors. A Holden barn is severely damaged after a fire rips through the structure. And an in-depth local forecast. I never had a face for television. 
And I'm a little jealous of the kids that have this ability to go away to college. Spring break! That was a coffee break for me and a cigarette. <laughs> I get up early every morning with one thing in mind. I want my audience to be informed, engaged, <laughs> and entertained. I'm Lisa Condit from the Hanover Theater. Join me every Thursday during Worcester News Tonight at 10 p.m. for the Hanover Theater this week. Join me on the Hank Stoltz Experience. People are always asking me, what is the experience? Well, that's the beauty of it. It's everything that has to do with Central Massachusetts. Welcome to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. My name is Tim Murray, President and CEO of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the Mayor's Forum. I'm Mayor Joe Petty. Welcome to Central Mass Chronicles. My name is Alan Fletcher. I am your host. Hello and welcome, WooTube viewers. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Holy Cross Women's Basketball Show. I'm Kevin Shea, alongside of the head coach of the Holy Cross Crusaders, Bill Gibbons. Up next on the Friday Night Football Frenzy, first quarter, watch this is Sam Brewer with a big run. Shot. Score! Oh, look at that score. score! And the Railers get back-to-back -back goals. The Pop Sox are going to win it. Welcome back. I'm here with the women's basketball head coach, Bill Gibbons, and we're here in the Blaney Gymnasium at the new athletic complex up at Holy Cross. Thank you for joining us. Great to be with you again, Brenna. Now, it's the, you guys have one year under your belt here with this complex. How has it helped the team, not only with being more prepared for games with the, with the, the strength and conditioning and everything, but also to bring recruits in as well? Oh, recruiting is it's huge. I mean, you, you walk into this place and it's state of the art and just uh, spectacular. So everyone that comes in for the first time just can't believe it then you walk down to the new indoor uh, field and, and you see teams practicing out there all the time but this has been great for us uh, for both programs with the new office suites and uh, good things happening uh, on the hill and we're excited about it but I can definitely see it helping us in recruiting and and just the girls enthusiasm and energy uh, being in the new place now, last year you were able to get your 600th win here at Holy Cross uh, with the win against Colgate. What do you remember from that day and what, what kind of emotions were going through your head? Yeah, it, it uh, well, I felt like Kyle Yastrzemski going for his uh, 3,000th hit because I was a big Yaz fan and I knew it took him a bunch of games to get it. And uh, I jinxed myself by talking about that because it took a few games. But it was just a lot of emotion of thankfulness uh, in, in all the people that helped me uh, get to Holy Cross and add Holy Cross Brenna. So there was a lot of thanksgiving uh, in that and to have my dad there uh, in his illness and uh, but to, to be there as my mentor was special and of course all my family. So you share those things with your family and you look back on them uh, later. Uh, this year I uh, have a passion to get us back to the top of the Patriot League. That's the uh, the number one goal and, and, and to win a championship but um, when you when you have a milestone like that I think you you look back fondly and there's a lot of Thanksgiving that was in my heart that day. Now coaching at a school like Holy Cross with the rich history of, of basketball the school has is there pressure for you as a coach? Um, I, I don't know uh, I guess you you always put pressure on yourself to win and to but being a Worcester kid growing up and, and uh, you know hearing the Bob Cousy and Ronnie Perry and Togo Palazzi, Tommy Heinsohn through the years and then me being a part of the uh, the men's program for George Blaney for four years and then seeing Togo start the women's program with their success uh, I guess there is a little history in my blood or I'm very familiar with it and, and certainly that's what I talk about that passion to to get that back and and anything less than a, a winning season is not uh, not what we want at Holy Cross, and and I think that's what you have to, uh, the passion and the um, striving for that is what we try to uh, instill in our players, friend. Yeah, you've been here for a few years. Uh, <laughs> what years. what are what are some things that you remember, whether it's players that have come through or just games that have really stood out for you? Yeah, I, I think I mostly remember the players and the. Um, you know, going to their weddings and then having them come back with their children and stuff like that. That's the fondest memory. We have 
uh, the 29th uh, this year. We're, we're finally around. Usually it's a recruiting weekend for homecoming, so my staff and I are gone. This year we're home, so we decided to have a little alumni shooting games with our team, and then we're going to have a tailgate. And it'll be great. There's a, a ton of alums that are coming back. Back. So I, certainly I remember some of the games beating Maryland uh, across the hallway in the, in the Hart Center, uh, the only NCAA win in Patriot League history, and for us to upset them um, here and, and beating Rutgers when they were number three in the country. So there's some wins that stand out, but the championship games, of course. But I think to answer your question, I think it's just to see those young girls grow into young woman ready for any and all challenges is the best satisfaction in my 38 years that I've been here. Now, the season is approaching. Mm. It seems like it's getting earlier. Yes. Uh, how do you, do you like that as a coach? How do you guys kind of prepare now as you're getting closer? Yeah, it's, uh, it's different. The rules change. Uh, I was talking off the air uh, with Sean Brenner that we start practice September 30th, which is the earliest we've ever started practice. So they are giving us four hours a week and uh, to work with them on the court and then of course coach Oliver has them in the strength and conditioning I like our freshmen I like the chemistry we're going to play a different style this year uh, a new identity so we're trying to instill that early in what I call the pre preseason uh, before we get started with our preseason pack practices but the the junior class uh, led by Lauren Maney has come back in great shape and I really like our four freshmen uh, they came up during the summer they had a team bonding at uh, Madeline Smith House uh, in New York and I like the chemistry I like the attitude and this is always a great time of year to get excited for hoop season yeah you got you have about three seniors that you have to kind of replace right. this year um, right. so how important is that you know next up mentality for the team yeah right I think they know that uh, you know of course infinity and and uh, Trisha Byrne and Katie Doherty three players that played a lot of minutes there's a lot of minutes there to to be replaced as well as points and assists so I think the girls are up to that challenge and I can tell how hard they've worked uh, we have a girl Catherine Petey uh, who's our walk-on that earned a scholarship and I challenged her uh, to uh, earn some of those minutes that particularly Infinity and Katie and she came back in the best shape of her life she's shooting the ball great so that's a great example of, of seeing that opportunity and seizing it by working hard you talked about them a little bit earlier. Your freshman class coming in. What do you? What have you seen, or what can we? Ex what can we expect to see from them? Right. I, well, there are a, a four girls that all bring something different to the uh, table. Um, Madison Dembski was first team All State in Pennsylvania. She's from Villa um, Marie Academy, the same as uh, Lisa Mipsud, and is a six-two uh, player that reminds us of Lauren. Actually, Aluchi Zemmer has probably been the most pleasant surprise. She was the two-time player of the uh, year in Rhode Island, and uh, uh, Lucci is a great athlete, and she's looked great in our early uh, workouts. Um, Avery LaBavera was a highly recruited point guard out of Harrison, New York, and uh, she's backing up Smitty now and learning from her. And then the fourth is Kelly Petro, who's a solid, like, six-foot guard, big guard that we haven't had in a while. So I like that group. I like their chemistry, and I like the way they're working, and hopefully we can gel them into the... Uh, the system and uh, and have a great year. Yeah, and looking ahead to the season, you have BC among others. Yep. Um, what are some things that you're looking forward to for this season? Well, we, we play a tough non-conference schedule, but we, we certainly want to have a winning record in that uh, sometimes we've, we've looked ahead to the Patriot League and just use the the non-conference to get ready for that but we want to win in the in the non-conference schedule I think we have some winnable games we have BC on their kids day at 11:30 game early in the year which will be a challenge for us but we're playing Albany who's uh, been a, a great team in the uh, uh, in the uh, America East Conference and and um, some Ivy League teams so it's a challenge but we want to have a winning record there and then be ready going into uh, ho hopefully have a great uh, season in the Patriot League and compete for a championship, finish in the top four so we can get a home game here in the Hart Center and anything can happen in the playoffs. But I'm excited, as you can tell, I have the same butterflies now that I did uh, 38 years ago when I first started up here at the, at the Cross. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we are excited for the season to begin as well. We'll have much more of the game after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. 
we need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Holy Cross football is back in Worcester. Don't miss family fun and Division I football right in your backyard. Tickets start at just $15. Visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets or call 1-844-GO-CROSS. We're proud to lead with high school sports stories because we know that's important to our viewers, that's important to our communities. I think it's incredibly unique because you just don't see this amount of coverage other places. We can do five and six minutes at 10 o'clock, whereas other stations might do two and a half minutes, and of that, 30 seconds is on high school sports. It's very easy to be enthusiastic watching these guys play, whether it's high school football or field hockey or lacrosse. When you see somebody make an outstanding play, you're kind of fired up about that. I come back and I'm like, Kev, I couldn't believe this play I saw in this game. And to see and to kind of be able to capture some of those magic moments when you're there to witness history. That's really cool. We're out there every day shooting the games ourselves and coming back and editing it and writing it ourselves. You get a certain insight that you don't get if you're, say, in a press box. We never forget the players that come from Central Mass, those that are lucky enough to play professional sports. We follow them in the pros. We never forget those guys coming from Central Mass. I've had people come up and say to me that, you know, we still watch and we're still fans because they can watch on TV. Has it brought fans to the game? Has it impacted local sports? I hope so. Coaches tell us it has. Certainly our goal is just to, just to cover the game and to really highlight the positive of, of high school and, and local college sports. And we're enjoying what we do, and that I hope that comes across. There's no other place I'd rather be, and there's no other job I'd rather do. All right, welcome back. Holy Cross came out in their new black jerseys and uniforms, but offense struggled early on. They have Swan with a pick early, and Crusader defense was able to hold on a couple of deep drives after those short fields, but still getting some points on the board was Dartmouth. Swan with three interceptions in the first half. Connor Davis with a couple of field goals. No offensive highlights to speak of for Holy Cross. And this was Kalen Parker taking a touchdown in. And then a touchdown late to Estrada. Made it 20 to nothing at halftime. Dartmouth and the Crusaders went to the break. Andy Lacombe back with Terry Wallace here. High above Fitton Field. And coach, you look at these numbers. They are tough. They're ugly. They are tough. Yeah, you think about it, you look at 20 nothing. You, you say to yourself, well, that's pretty good, pretty big deficit, but it could have been a lot worse. So uh, defensively, I think Holy Cross actually played very well, excluding maybe that last drive. But offensively, they got to come up with something. they got to get their defensive break. They've been on the field way too long. Time of possession not seen here. Favors Dartmouth, 22 minutes, 16 seconds to 7 minutes, 44 seconds for Holy Cross. 3 to 1 easily. 3 to 1, right. For Dartmouth, the big green converting twice on fourth downs as well. 15 first downs to none for Holy Cross. Wow. Holy Cross's defense will be on the field first when we resume action here in the second half. And then that offense will have a chance to try to uh, turn things around a little bit. Holy Cross trailing the very impressive Dartmouth big green. 20 to nothing at halftime. We'll take a break. More from Fitton Field after this. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. 
Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank, we take banking personally. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Bison Pride is the feeling that you get when you're with all of your Nichols friends and you're rooting for your team and your school and your community. Yes, even though we are a smaller school, you feel the big school vibe here. All right, welcome back. We are just about set for the second half kickoff. Yeah, extra calisthenics being done by both teams to get ready. Bucknell comes to town in a week. And we'll have the game live at 1 o'clock. Our third straight Holy Cross game on Charter TV 3. And that is, yeah, it's the Channel 3 homestand here at, uh, at Holy Cross. Now, in that, that game against Bucknell, we should see Dominic Cozier who really is a, is a spark plug on the offensive side. I'm told he's in uniform today, but he was injured in the first half of the Yale game last week. He was the offense in the first half, uh, the real spark in the offense, and they were able to come back and win without him in the second half. He's expected to come back next week. That'll be good for Patriot League play. Uh, you've seen mainly Miles Alexander in the first half for Bob Chesney's offense, a little bit of Peter Oliver. But the Crusaders a bit depleted at the, or depth-wise anyway, at the uh, running back position. So Andy, here's the thing. Uh, Coach Mulcahy at Darty, he's already he's had this uh, st thing that I really enjoy. Uh, the third quarter shutout. So this is key for Holy Cross. They gotta cut, shut up the Dartmouth in the third quarter. And you can't get 20 points at once. You gotta take one drive at a time, get some first down, get some momentum going, get a score on the board, and then you're down two scores. So you can't panic, but you've got to stop. You can't let Dama score at all in the third quarter. Well, for as bad as Holy Cross has been statistically in the first half, in this game and throughout the first three games of the season, Buddy Tevens knows that Crusaders have been very good in the second half, right. especially in the fourth quarter. They've hung on in the third quarters of the first three games. They've been really good in the fourth. Crusaders kicking off for the first time today, which is kind of strange. They did convert an onside kick against Yale last week. And Wilkinson to put it in play. And it's angled, it's gonna go directly out of bounds, not what the Crusaders wanted to not start at, not at all. the third quarter. Good field position coming for the big green of Dartmouth. As the defense is back out on the field, they were on the field almost 23 minutes in the first half. It's amazing. That is a lot of work. And so you've seen sophomores and freshmen on the defensive line that we did not see a lot last week. And uh, you've seen some guys having to get into the game. And Bob Chesney's talked about having to play more of those younger guys, and he's doing it now. So here is Derek Kyler and the offense of Dartmouth. First possession of the third quarter. Bear, the running back, in motion. And the give is to Cooper. Cooper's got maybe a couple yards. Wrapped up quickly. Looks like Kevin Busseroni right there in, in the pile with Neil Vorster and company. Busseroni, a, uh, a vocal leader on the defense when he's in there. And he caps us as well on that outside. There's a shotgun, empty backfield. Kytler's throw in and out of the hands of Hagdorn. He had him, and he had some room to run. On a hand on coverage. Yeah, there's another big play here. Now third down, get it off the field. <coughs> Give it three and out. Give it offense a chance here. Dartmouth 
converting third downs throughout the first half. They have been better, were better at converting third downs when they weren't in the Crusader red zone. So this is third and seven at their own 38. They send the running back in motion. Tunnel again. They go over to Estrada. Estrada trying to fight for yards with Honeycutt blocking, and he's not going to get it. Joe Lang was in the neighborhood, and Joe Lang and company with Baker making the play. That's a big stop there. It's the third or fourth time uh, Dartmouth has run that, so uh, you know they, they were used to that and made a good defensive play. And we'll see the punter for the first time in a long time for uh, Dartmouth. And he gets a high kick. Richie Di Nicola lets it bounce. It takes a good Dartmouth bounce. This is inside the 10, right down to the nine yard line. And the Crusaders will be backed up to start after a 51 yard kick. Let's check in with Brenna Wilson for the first time in the second half. Brenna. Yeah, you talked about it earlier and the freshmen have been making large contributions this year. And while Coach Chesney says they may feel a little, the coaches may be feeling a little nervous having the young players on the field, the players themselves should feel confident. The coaches try to put them in as many situations as possible during practice so that the players can make their mistakes there and have as much success on the field. Guys. All right, thank you, Brenna. There was a flag on the play, and things have gone from bad to worse. It's, it's rough against in the Holy Cross. Oh. They ran into the kicker, and it's a first down yardage. Did not see the flag initially, and the big green offense is still on the field. First and 10, ball's at the 45-yard line. And it is the give to Bear. Bear fighting his way close to midfield. Ryan Brady in around the tackle as well, again. A lot of pressure on that Holy Cross defense, Andy. I mean, they just can't catch a break right there. And it's not gone the way of the Crusaders so far this afternoon. A couple minutes gone here in the third quarter. Quick hitter, Kyler out to Estrada. Good block on the outside from Honeycutt. And he's got a first down, does Estrada. Hicks and Johnson in on the stop. Yeah, just a quick hit screen. Split into a nice job blocking the corner. Nice positive gain. Dartmouth gets the benefit of the penalty, but now can they really step on the gas and take advantage of it? They've got a first down and they're moving in Holy Cross territory. They give it to Smith and he is wrapped up in the backfield. Joe Lang leading the way for Holy Cross. Yeah, that's a good call on the defense there. They sent some pressure and uh, ran right into the ball. I think you're gonna probably, they gotta try to sell a little bit more on defense because they, the, they gotta get the ball back. That's a great defensive play. Now you got second and long. Forster's in there in the mix. Ebo as well. Second down, 12. Dartmouth really didn't go backwards at all last week against Georgetown. I, mean, I think they only had one negative play. Couple here, this one's a, out to Honeycutt, he's inside the 40. Lang among the tacklers in there. It'll be third and long coming for the Big Green. So third and five, another situation for this Holy Cross defense if they can come up and make a stop. Maybe Ron here, Parker came in. He had Brady showing pressure up the middle, and now Dartmouth checks it back with the line. Three receivers to the top of the screen. Yep. And it's the quarterback. quarterback on the keep. He's not going anywhere. Looked like Brady ate him up right at the line of scrimmage. And he was there. Ryan Brady is everywhere. And they're in no man's land out there yeah. for Dartmouth. And they're going to bring the special teams unit out, the punter <laughs> yeah, coming out. Right, you punt here, Andy. I mean, again, your defense has been stellar all day. You might as well have Holy Cross have a long field to go. Davis Brief got run into on the last time, his only punt effort of the game. Holy Cross running some guys in late. They have two return men now back. 
John John Roberts and Richie DiNicola are back, and Dartmouth's going to take a delay of game penalty. Yeah, you do that, Andy, because you get a better angle. Now you get five more yards to deal with when you're punting the ball, so that's on, that's on purpose. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So it just pushes him back a few, of about five yards. I like the idea of two return people here, Andy, too. Co good coaching uh, because he's going to try to angle to the corner. That way you get two guys to cover half the field each, which is a good coaching move. Yeah, Dean Nicole, the regular punt returner, and John John Roberts, who's in on kicks. They let the play clock run again. And now brief to punt. High kick, it's towards Di Nicola. Calls for a fair catch and makes it right at the 17-yard line. So actually a little bit better field position than Holy Cross would have had before the kick, uh, the first kick, rather, with the penalty. College Football on Charter TV3 is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia and by Bay State Savings Bank. It was a 26-yard kick from Brief. And there's a good look at the crowd here. Holy Cross, they haven't had a lot to cheer about, but there's still a lot of football left. A give us to Alexander on the outside, trying to get outside. He's not going anywhere. And Trainer, believe it or not, <laughs> was there again. Yeah, they really haven't had any success running perimeter running game. Look at the great penetration there by the defensive line. They're right in the backfield. That is a big man in David Chalmers. Yeah, they're, they're huge up front. 6'4", 300 pounder. You only need three when they're that all that big. Here's a little option pitch out to Alexander trying to get the corner. He's able to get the lost yardage back. And they'll play it out to the 19. Yeah, this is an actually great job by the back here because it doesn't look like much is gonna happen though. He outruns the defense and uh, gets something out of nothing there. 38, gotta have a, gotta have a conversion here. Dartmouth has done such a great job with just four guys around the line of scrimmage. Holy Cross got a tight end in here. Maybe watch him get the ball, possibly. Third and eight. They bring just four. Wade throwing. Complete to Dorsey at the 25. He's a yard short. Now they spot it out to 26, so he's just a yard short. And let's see what Coach Chesney sends. He elects to send in the punting unit with Derek Ng. Yeah, I like it, the crossing pattern. We were calling for that earlier, but... Uh, just uh, just right in front of the sticks. And uh, Dom is a very good tackling team, and they just got him before the first down. Holy Cross still without a first down. Not even with a penalty. There's Ng. Good boot. Hagdorn catches nice it, coverage. does not call for fair catch. Busseroni clocks him right there. Dartmouth gets the ball back, up 20 to nothing. Holy Cross football is back in Worcester. Don't miss family fun and Division I football right in your backyard. Tickets start at just $15. Visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets or call 1-844-GO-CROSS. Harrington Physician Services specializes in the understanding, prevention, and management of complex sports injuries and athletic rehabilitation. Whether you need care for a torn rotator cuff or ACL, our board-certified physicians are here to serve you. We offer comprehensive physical therapy and rehabilitation in Charlton, Southbridge, and Webster, and an on-site radiology partnership with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. To learn more, go to HarringtonHospital.org. Harrington Healthcare System, compassionate, quality care. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Welcome back. Dartmouth offense coming back out on the field. It has been all green, all big green this afternoon. 8.56 left in the third quarter. Dartmouth pitching a shutout and their offense trying to do some more damage here against Holy Cross. We're still in the middle of a 
bit of a timeout here on the field. So while I have the opportunity, we can tell you that Central Mass College Football on Charter TV3 brought to you by Unibank, by the Sullivan Group, by Pucci's Fine Jewelry, Milford Federal, and by Harrington Physician Services. So first and 10 for Dartmouth. And their sophomore quarterback, Derek Kyler, quick hitter outside to Estrada. Mark Estrada cuts it back in. He's over the 45 to 47, close to first down yardage. Good pickup on first down. Yeah, impressed how the uh, wide receivers at Dartmouth block. Hey, one quick uh, observation. During, uh, before that play, Coach Chesney's in a defensive huddle being all positive and uh, pumping up his defense. It's a great uh, job as a coach. You know, keep them positive. They played very well. And, uh, you know, keep fighting. 60-minute game. That's good to see. Strada did not have a catch in the first game, was not part of the offense in the first game. He's been a big part of it here for Dartmouth. Downfield looking for Estrada again. He's caught it at the Holy Cross 40-yard line where he's taken out of bounds there by Grant Holloman. Yeah, that's a great scheme here. It's a, they high-low the corner. They fake a jet, and the quarterback reads the corner. And they, they went to the deep guy, so he throws to the uh, underneath guy, runs a deep square out. He's, uh, they're really looking for him, and he's had a really good game. And so here we go, Kyler again, Cooper in the backfield. And the give is to the tailback, and he fights inside the 40. Maybe three there. I'll tell you, you got to be impressed with the Holy Cross defense. They've battled all day. They've been on the field, like you said, Andy, three times, three, three plays to one. And uh, they're still fighting. That's all you can ask for as a coach. They're, they're going at it, and... Uh, you know, Dartmouth, they don't have any superstars in offense, but it seems like everybody's pretty solid, and that's a really good sign of a good football team. Good look at Buddy Tevens there. He does have some family in central Massachusetts. I ran into his brother at a college football game a few years ago. Some Tevens in the Wachusett Regional School District. There is Parker going ahead for a couple. And there had been. There have been some good Tevens playing sports for Wachusett the last couple of years. He's a Pembroke Mass native, is Buddy Tevens, but uh, got some Central Mass ties, it seems. Third and short coming for Dartmouth. Again, two down territory here, Andy. So, that, you know, you can take a chance at a play action pass or something, knowing full well you go for it on fourth down. Agdorn in motion. Nice it is kept action. by Kyler. He's got a man wide open, the tight end, Rempel. He's open inside the 10. Five stays in bounds, and it's a touchdown. Dartmouth. Yeah, good play call. Like I, we alluded to, you know, play action play is passed there. You know, in full well, you're going for it on fourth down. You have really nothing to lose, everything to gain. And uh, great fake, drew the defenders in. He's wide open. He hits him for a touchdown. Yeah, great scheme. First look at the tight end. And Connor Rempel goes in for the touchdown. He had four catches in the win over Georgetown. That's his first touch today. And it's 26 to nothing, Dartmouth. Davis on to attempt the extra point. Nice job by the holder to get it down, and it's 27 to nothing, Dartmouth. All big green here from Fitton. Crusaders need and have some work to do. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values, our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. Committed to our community. We live here, we work here, we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. Doors. Every door is different, every door unique, and each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place, a bank where we listen to you and find answers, all to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. 
Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. Our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Yeah, just, you know, when you've been running the ball well all day, you know, you can get play action, and then they sent someone out to the flat, and, and then the tight end went to the flag, and it's a great play, and then touch him. Yes, you see Holy Cross, they freeze, see the lot of defensive players, and then he's, no, one, no one follows him. The uh, corner went for the first level guy, so it's really good play design. The drive, six plays, 62 yards, took two minutes, 12 seconds off the clock, and extended it to a four-score possession a four, four possession lead for the Dartmouth Big Green. Here's John John Roberts on the return. Roberts breaks off one tackle. He's over the 30 where he is taken down there by Nico Mermigas. Reserve defensive back. Central Mass College Football and Charter TV3 brought to you by the Central Mass Safety Council, by Bertera Nissan of Auburn, by Holy Cross Athletics, and by Nichols College. 6.37 left third quarter. Holy Cross does not have a first down. They have not had four plays in a row yet offensively. It's been three and outs. Per our statistician extraordinaire, Phil Robo, in his final season. Oh. Yes, this is his final season. How could that be? Well, Phil has done it. Yeah, Phil, you got to stay here, buddy. Yeah. You, you, I thought you had that lifetime contract. Phil does have a lifetime contract. He's <laughs> exercising his own option to get ah. out. Oh, he'll be missed. He's awesome. Penalty was against Holy Cross five yards. Nobody does stats better than him. Nobody. Phil, Yeah, Phil's like, Phil's like Josh Gordon with the Browns. He's holding out or <laughs> he's looking for an extended, ex more of a <laughs> better, better pay in the contract. There you go. First and 15 for Holy Cross. Peter Oliver in the backfield with Jeff Wade. Wade scrambling, he's in trouble. Wade is going down. And it'll be a sack for Jackson Perry. And they get to Jeff Wade. So Andy, yeah, so that's not a, that's not a, uh, on the offensive line, that's a coverage sack. Yeah. There's no one open outfield. You know what I mean? So you can only, uh, Hold him out for so long, so uh, that's a great job by Dartmouth Secondary, who's been stellar all day. And the line's done a nice job for Holy Cross protecting Jeff Wade, but he hasn't had a lot of options downfield. Agreed. Second and 19 for the Crusaders. Tough snap. Wade is able to get it. Now he's going down again. He's going to get sacked again on back-to-back -back plays. Rocco DeLeo and Jackson Perry or Jake Mullen rather, meeting at the quarterback. Those are two big guys. Third and 22 for Holy Cross. This could be historic in the lack of offense if this keeps up, the I way Holy Cross is going. I wouldn't throw it right at that corner right now. They bring in just three. It's completed, and it'll be short of the original line of scrimmage. Tough to tell who it was. Looked like Tenio Ayeni, it is. And uh, Crusaders will send out the punting unit after a nine yard pickup. Yep, it's uh, pretty amazing. No first downs in the third quarter. That's a short kick, takes another Dartmouth bounce. In will end up in Holy Cross territory, 21-yard kick. And uh, Bob Chesney said it with Brenna Wilson going to halftime. Punting, he's, he, he talked about punting being not good. They've had two different guys. Derek King's a freshman, he's a place kicker. And the backup punter, Wilkinson's the punter and also the backup place kicker. And neither have had a heck of a lot of success here. And that's the problem, Andy, too. When you're not doing anything on offense, you hope your punter can kind of turn the field for you. And if you're having a rough day, it really hurts. Uh, in all areas for you, so. As a coach here, you get these games tight, these ha tend to happen once in a while. You still want your kids to play hard the whole game and just regroup. Hopefully get something going in the latter part of the game here. So it's the ball spotted at the 49 of Holy Cross. Kyler 
Handoff. And that is, is it Smith or is it Cooper? It's Smith. Picks up about five yards on the play. The Crusaders have a total of 30 yards of total offense to this point. There's a quick handoff. It's going to Smith. Smith trying to get the good edge. Hustle. It was a good hustle play. That was Stefanik with the initial hit. Third down coming after a two-yard pickup. You love effort like that. He comes from the other side of the field to make the tackle. That's that's unbelievable effort on the defensive side. Third and three. Another big play for this defense. If the Crusaders are going to have any kind of chance, they need to make a stop here. That's a and procedure. flag flies. You got some of those big guys up front moving. And he'll push Dartmouth back five yards. Sixth penalty against the big green. Third and eight coming now. This ball's back at the 47 yard line. Can Holy Cross get any kind of pressure on Kyler? They send four. Kyler with time. Now he's scrambling to the outside, trying to get to outside of a Cardell. He's going to get out of bounds. He's going to be well short of first down yardage. And I think you'd see the punter come out now for Dartmouth as the Holy Cross defense makes a stop. Yeah, that was a good job up front on getting pressure there. They were trying to run a stop and go out of the bubble look. You pump it, and then you, you have the, the outside defender going to stop and go. Like It looks like he's in a stop block. And Holy Cross had great defense there. Di Nicola back to return the kick. Crusaders bring nine guys at it. This punt straight up. Di Nicola, fair caught at the 19. Crusaders will take over there. Trying to move the football for the first time today. Down 27 to Dartmouth. Holy Cross football is back in Worcester. Don't miss family fun and Division I football right in your backyard. Tickets start at just $15. Visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets or call 1-844-GO-CROSS. Doors. Every door is different. Every door unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Harrington Physician Services specializes in the understanding, prevention, and management of complex sports injuries and athletic rehabilitation. Whether you need care for a torn rotator cuff or ACL, our board-certified physicians are here to serve you. We offer comprehensive physical therapy and rehabilitation in Charlton, Southbridge, and Webster, and an on-site radiology partnership with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. To learn more, go to HarringtonHospital.org. Harrington Healthcare System, compassionate, quality care. Welcome back, Holy Cross's offense back out on the field. 3.05 to play in the third quarter. Really not a heck of a lot to say about uh, what's been happening here this afternoon other than just the dominance of Dartmouth's defense. And it's really been the front four doing a lot of work. As up the middle is Alexander. Alexander, some good yardage there. Almost five on the first play from scrimmage and Holy Cross is gonna go up with some tempo now. I like to see them go back to that crossing routes again. Got five on the play and then they go back to Alexander and Alexander maybe got another one or two on the initial surge before he was pushed back. Crusaders are back up on the line of scrimmage. Third and three. Can they get the elusive first down? Oh, 
Wade trying to draw him with a hard count. Now he looks to the sideline. In motion. There goes Alexander. Now a quick hitter to the outside. Ayeni, and he's going down to the backfield. Loss of yardage on the play. Kyron McKinney Cruden making the play, and the Crusaders will have to punt. Yeah, that, that, they're just running a bubble to the slot, and Dotman's been up there all day long. They've been great, sure tacklers, and you know that's gone for a loss most, most of the day. So uh, head off to Dotman's defense. Been outstanding today. And now penalty markers fly. The Crusaders moved, and a procedure penalty before the punt. And that'll push Holy Cross back a little bit more. Well, the Holy Cross statistics and uh, their game notes, they have all these things called the last time, the last time a team did this, the last time a team did that. The last time Holy Cross was shut out was last October against Yale. There's the punt from Wilkinson. Hagdorn, that ball just drops, and Hanahan's going to down it at the 46, 37-yard kick. More on that thought in just a second. Charter TV3's coverage of college football presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia and by Bay State Savings Bank. So the last time Holy Cross was shut out was at Yale, 10-14, 2017. That was Tom Gilmore's final game at head coach. The last time they were held with a TD, obviously, the same date. The last time they were held without a first down, not in the notes. Probably because never happened. Probably. <laughs> You wouldn't, no, you wouldn't keep a note for that, that's right? right? No, we don't, I've never heard of that. So. I mean, even through three quarters, it's an amazing feat. Figure Dartmouth will have this football through the end of the third. There's Parker on the carry to midfield. You might break a record, Andy, for the least amount of possession of the football if they keep that. They may not even get a quarter. Well, another incredible stat is just, you know, we talked about time of possession. It's the amount of plays. Yes that have been run by one team or another. And we'll, we'll get to that in just a second as well. Startman's back on the ball, second and six. Throwing, Hagdorn complete, 44 yard line, right at the sticks. See if they give him the spot. They will, it's a first down for Dartmouth. Dartmouth, let's just say, has a lot more plays than Holy Cross. My, in all this scramble for these numbers, I, I don't have the one in front of me yet. But I will look back to halftime and tell you that Dartmouth had 50 total offensive plays at halftime. Holy Cross had 17. Wow. That number has only grown here in the third quarter. That disparity has this one thrown away as the Crusaders grounding. got some pressure on with McArdle. Uh, he's going to probably say he's outside the tackle and box. And it's just an incomplete pass. Yeah, as long as you're outside the tackle box and you throw the ball over the line of scrimmage, it's not con considered intentional grounding, but it uh, doesn't look good. That should be intentional grounding, in my opinion. <laughs> 21 first downs to nothing. And the disparities are, are tough. They're tough to take. It has been utter dominance by Dartmouth. Here's the handoff to Parker. And he lowers the boom and picks up a couple there. Nice job on the outside by the Holy Cross secondary. That was Christos Argus. And that is the last play of the third quarter. 27 to nothing. Dartmouth with the lead and moving into Holy Cross territory again. We're back with the fourth quarter after this. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody! I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley. 
and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Bison Pride is the feeling that you get when you're with all of your Nichols friends and you're rooting for your team and your school and your community. Yes, even though we are a smaller school, you feel the big school vibe here. All right, welcome back. Good day for the Big Green and a good day for their head coach, Buddy Tevens. Now, Dartmouth has 698 wins as a program coming in. They win today at 699. Only five FCS schools have 700 or more. Wow. That's like Harvard, North Dakota State, who's like a perennial, perennial champion. Yep. Teams like that. Yale. You know, teams that have long historic programs. And uh, Dartmouth just two wins away from joining that club. Third and eight to start the fourth quarter. Kyler's looking downfield, has time. Now he's gonna tuck it and run. Runs into his own man and is gonna be short of first down yards, but only about two yards short. Got six on the play. Yeah, you'll, you'll see them go here. Yeah, Crusaders bring some beef in on the front of the, off of the defensive line as it'll be fourth and short. The tight end sets in, three tight ends. They bring in that extra tight end, Guidon, who's a converted offensive tackle, comes a tight end. And they keep it and then throw, and it's complete to Rempel, the tight end. He's inside the 25, first down. Plenty of yardage there for the big green. Yeah, that's a good call. I mean, you got a lot of movement there. Guy in motion, you have him, the H back, he comes back the other way, it's just a tight end delay. Doesn't look like much, but very effective football play. Through three, 69 plays to 26, so just nine plays for Holy Cross wow. in that third quarter. And the whistle blows, timeout taken by Holy Cross. If you're in the Worcester area, there are World War II aircraft flying overhead. Crusade, Crusaders might need to order an airstrike to get out of this thing. College football on Charter TV 3 is brought to you by Unibank, by the Sullivan Group, by Pucci's Fine Jewelry, Milford Federal, and by Harrington Physician Services. We'll have to see the next time that B12 or whatever it is, not a B12, that's a vitamin, but next time that, that bomber flies overhead, if we can get a shot of it. The Wings of Freedom Tour in, the, in at Worcester Airport this weekend. Very nice. Hey, it was a busy uh, driving in tonight, and the tailgating was unbelievable. Yeah, the freshman field was bombarded. Well, they don't have tailgating on the baseball field today because of the rain overnight so they had a good crowd out for this one first down and the handoff is to bear and the freshman tailback pushes ahead for a couple maybe two on the play clock moving closing in on 13 and a half minutes to play now if you're holy cross and this game is going away, going away from you. And you have Bucknell coming in next week in the Patriot League. You're hoping for some sort of spark here in the final couple of minutes to just get you going into practice, into the lift tomorrow. There's Bear to the outside with some speed. And Bear close to the sticks, just shy of first down yardage. And it was Argus 
getting a hand on him to knock him down. Yeah, the uh, Diamond's got luxury of backs. It's, they've got four backs that can really run the ball. That's And this kid, the freshman, has had a nice game catching the ball and running the ball, too. Yeah, Bear showing good speed on the outside. Nice couple of starts there for the sophomore quarterback, Kyler, as well. Win over Georgetown. Looks to be leading his team to a win over Holy Cross here. That's up the middle. Parker gets just hammered at the sticks. And he looks to be a, maybe half a football short. Yeah, I think he looks a little short. Parker's the third running back. Of course, we saw Smith. We saw all the, we saw Cooper. And now it's going to be Parker in there with a couple tight ends, three tight ends set. And they go to Parker. He's got the first down, runs into Brady, but just beyond the sticks. And Dartmouth will keep the drive moving and the clock moving when they set it here. Tell you, and you credit to Holy Cross. Oh, they're still playing. Defense has been on the field all day long, and they're still, they're still playing very hard. Uh, there's no question about it. Defense is putting in maximum effort. They've just run into some real road graders up front, too. Oh, for sure. Taking the extra time off the clock. Kyler, the give, nope, he's going to hold on to it. Finds Rempel, Rempel's going to the end zone. His second touchdown of the game, and Dartmouth extends the lead. It's 33 to nothing. And the tight end is factored quite mightily here in the second half through the passing game. Yeah, anytime you can run the ball like they have, play action is always going to be there. And again, it's not an exotic scheme, but just very effective. And, uh, you know, when you got a weapon like that tight end who can run with the ball after you catch it, you might as well use them. Davis on to attempt the extra point. 34 to nothing. Dartmouth. Holy Cross with the football when we come back. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident, before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Hi, I'm Mike Demers, General Sales Manager here at Berterra Nissan in Auburn. We'll give you the best price and leave you happy every single time. Our local team is ready to provide you with an unparalleled customer experience. Save $6,000 off MSRP on a brand new 2018 Nissan Rogue Model S. I want to invite you to come down and experience the number one Nissan dealership for sales, service, and parts in Central New England. Berterra Nissan, Route 20, Auburn, Massachusetts. Yeah, you can see on the touchdown here, a lot of moving parts. Good fake there. Quarterback comes out, tight end uh, catches the ball in space, and he uh, finds his way into the end zone. Now, this Connor Rempel has been great here in the second half. He, he lines up on the other side as the wing and just cu cuts across the formation and catches the ball. Did his job blocking in that first half and uh, has been a big part of the uh, passing game here in the second half. Great uh, replays as usual from our guys. There is Spencer Gilliam back inside the 10. Gilliam to the outside. Still on his feet, now shy of the 24. Now it still, you know, Holy Cross has been, you know, been down this year. 
in every game. And uh, they've maintained, you know, kind of positivity on the sideline. And they're still having a conversation. They're still being positive. There's still high fives happening here. There's still obviously coaching and teaching going on. But not much else has gone right. But if you can keep that attitude into the next week, you've got something. Here's Wade, tucks it away. Wade scrambles, throws over the middle. Nice it's catch. Dorsey with a completion to the 30. Jeff Wade is 8 of 13. He does have three interceptions against him. But he's only thrown the ball 13 times. Yeah, not many yards either. Second down and short. Wade looking. He's open. Got a man go. downfield. Mountain, he's wide open at the 50. Mountain to the 40. It's a foot race to the end zone. Derek Mountain, he he's is. In. Oh, give it to him. Oh, uh, taken down at the one yard line. Oh, I don't know. Just inside the one. They yeah. might want to look at it. Yeah, there, I think he's, I thought he had stretched the ball, but he might have hurt his shoulder too, unfortunately. 68 yards for Derek Mountain, who was hurt on the play. Let's see. And Good call here. Good uh, patience by Wade there. Nice ball. I'm going to say he's in. Well, he crosses back on the line of scrimmage. He's in. I think it's ah. a touchdown. He's the ball was crossed. That's that's. At, you know what? You know, think of the positives. It's a first down. It's the first right. first down if it's not a touchdown. Right. They're and gonna, now they're, they're, there's they're, the there is the whistle. That's a touchdown. I'm telling you right now. They check it. It's a touchdown. And they will go to review. Again, the review rules in the Patriot League, they review anything close. Coaches get a review. Yeah, I, I, I think the ball, the, the key is, does the knee go down before the ball crosses? I Oh, it's close. Yeah. You'd almost have to have a pylon camera to get that one right to see if uh, it's a great effort, though. Now, the Patriot League handles the replays. We have our looks at them, of course, but the each coach gets a review. Gets a, chance to review a play and if they win a challenge they get another chance and then sometimes it's just called for on a close play by the booth that is here at Holy Cross Derek Mountain that was a big play for him he was wide open made the catch great effort too and and rambled that's only his second catch of the year he had one catch for two yards coming in it helps the average. Holy Cross has three possessions, a minute, or one minute and one second or less. In a 13 second possession in their opening possession. Their yes, fourth touchdown. possession is 45 seconds. And there's the touchdown call. Awesome. Mountain stretches. He may have been hurt, but he stretched for the end zone. And Holy Cross is on the board. So Andy, we're one for one in reviews. <laughs> That's a positive. That broke up the uh, possession streak. 13 second possession, a 45 second possession, a one minute, one second possession. And the Crusaders are on the board with the long strike to Derek Mountain. Derek Ng, the extra point, the kick is good. 34 to seven. There's some positivity for Fit and Field and the Crusaders going in to a timeout. We're back after this. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. With the tremendous growth of life sciences both globally and locally, we've dedicated our resources to build a strong, knowledgeable and responsive team to meet the insurance and risk management needs of this dynamic industry. Our personal lines team will make sure your home, your car, your personal belongings and most importantly your family are protected. The Sullivan Group has the resources, the carriers and the coverage to protect you and your business. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. 
Bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. Our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Yeah, so it's a great uh, throw here by where you see his head. He, he, he looks back, and it's a straight post pattern. He splits the safeties and then just a race to the end zone. And without the naked eye, he was in, and, was, and they did a nice job reviewing it and uh, giving Holy Cross a touch. Great effort. I think it's impressive, the speed of Derek Mountain, able to run away from the defenders. Yep. It's a big guy, and it officially goes for 70 yards and a touchdown. And Holy Cross on the board after the replay. Speaking of replays and uh, just how they're looking at things, let's go down to Brenna Wilson for more. Yeah, Andy, you kind of referred to it earlier. In this season, the Patriot League put into place a new replay system. There are eight cameras around the field, and they look a little bit like security cameras. And that gives the replay officials different views around the field uh, to, to look at plays. And turnovers and scoring plays are reviewed. Each coach gets one challenge per half, and if their challenge is good, they'll receive an additional challenge. The coaches don't need to throw a flag. They simply need to get the attention of the ref or call a timeout. All right, thank you, Breno. We had a good shot of one of those security-looking cameras that they have around the field. Now, the important to note, they do not use our cameras. They only use those, those eight that are around the field. Uh, they do not use our looks at it. There's an additional kind of time stoppage here before the kickoff. Yeah, we had a great vantage point from our look anyway, you know. So I can understand that because you don't do every game. but Right. So, you know, 34-7, you know, onside kick, yeah, I guess. You know, because you want, you want to tell your team you fight for 60 minutes. So I wouldn't be surprised if they try one. You know, if you get one of those and all of a sudden you quick score, you never know what can happen, but. Now a little spark there, and you know the Crusader fans are probably out there saying, "Well, where was that all game? Where was, was, yeah. was Mountain open all game? Was was there a different personnel group in there for Dartmouth? Is that why it was it was available there? I mean, what happened? But uh, sometimes you know things just come came free. He came wide open on that play. Right, Dartmouth definitely has the enhanced team. You can see all the lower numbers, receivers, and defensive backs. Crusaders showing onside kick with Wilkinson. They're lined up. Wilkinson gets a good, good Got second it. bounce, and it's recovered by Martin Dorsey. And the Crusaders execute the onside kick. They're two for their last two. Love it. On onside kicks. Why not? They got one against Yale. They have one against Dartmouth. It's a great kick. What you want is that big second bounce. So that way your defenders can get there within 10 yards and you'll, you'll see the big bounce right there. Perfect. What a great play. Great kick. See, the second bounce is the key. And it's a big one. It's nice and high so you get the time for your, your plays to elevate like that and get the ball. Very well executed. You can tell they can really they really practice that, and they did a great job. And Martin Dorsey has that long reach and great hands, so you have that talented receiver running things down on special teams. Peter Oliver's in motion. Wade looking to throw. Screen. Comes back to Blaze Bell. Get going. They get through the first wash, but good job by the Dartmouth defense to blow that screen up at the point of attack. And it's actually the big fellow, Rocco DeLeo, that carries Blaze Bell out of bounds after just a, maybe a yard. They, they really rally to the ball, though, on defense. Unbelievable. So second down and a long eight. Quick hitter to Bell into Dartmouth territory. Taken out of bounds at the 46. Holy Cross trying to end this game with a little bit of a spark. 
Little pitch out to Oliver. Oliver around the corner. He's got first down Good yardage. Run. He fights for it at the end. That's what they like about Peter Oliver. He lowers the shoulder and finishes the run. Yeah, I should, this Peter, great to back at, at uh, St. John's. Nice hard run, finishes it. But you want to see only a freshman. He has a great career ahead of him, I'm sure, at Holy Cross. It's a first down for Holy Cross. Here's Wade, downfield, Ayeni, and nearly intercepted. Hands on it from Ryan Rogie. Yeah, their offense is starting to open up. They're running a lot more high-low patterns, not so much uh, short stuff, and uh, it's been effective. Crusaders now over 115 yards, 20 yards of total offense. A lot of it on that, se well, most of it on that 70-yard throw and catch for a touchdown. Here's Wade with time, has a man, Dorsey. Got about nine on the play. Close to first down yardage. It'll bring up a good protection there. He scans the field well, doing a good job looking off the receiver. Hits a right in the numbers. That's a good pass. And the give is to Oliver, and Oliver may just be about a half a yard short yeah, of the first this. down. He's running hard, though. Not much, not much there. With pace, the Crusaders right back on the line of scrimmage. The give is to Oliver. He's got the first down as he fights forward for two. And now a little bit of a spark here for Holy Cross. See a little more energy now on the near sideline. They're not going to win the game, but can they take it to Bucknell? First down, time is running. Under eight minutes, 20 seconds to play. It's like Bruno, the running back now for Holy Cross. Wade. Got to come back to him. Going to have to tuck it and run, and he's going to get out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Nice job by the Dartmouth defender just to lay hands up and just let him run out of bounds. Always kind of, I imagine, Difficult not to take a shot. That would have drawn 15 yards. Interesting here, Andy. Isaiah Swan's been playing left corner the whole game, and now with Blaze Bell coming to the other side, he's, he's moved side, so over. Matched up with the Crusaders' leading receiver. Holy Cross piling up the first downs. They now have three. Here's Wade. That one. Ooh. Thrown behind Bell, and... Swan, if he had gotten maybe a better look at it, might have taken it back. Be third down. Ninth play of this Holy Cross possession coming up. Wade, 12 of 18. 113 yards through the air. Pocket collapsing, Wade's going down. DeLeo, the big fella, came from the edge and took care of business. DeLeo. Yeah, Thomas' uh, front four has been very impressive. They haven't been getting to him, but I tell you, they've been stopping the run, and they're still, see a cross stunt there? The two tackles do a cross stunt. DeLeo was a catcher in high school. He that's, that's a penalty. Last they season. Fourth down. Wade. They didn't get off Incomplete. the field there. You see it's a, down there. It's a, there too many a, people on the field. There is a flag. You're right. Flag on the far side. Be against Dartmouth. Yeah, so that's happened to Holy Cross earlier. So the rule is if the offense subs, you can sub. You can sub, but you got to get everybody off the field. They didn't have the time. Number 54 in the defense did not get off the field prior to the snap. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So another fourth down opportunity. Another fourth down opportunity after the illegal substitution on Dartmouth. And Wade has another shot. He's got Justin Bruno in the backfield, the freshman. But Blitzen. Wade throwing. High intercepted. Intercepted 
Dwayne Terry. The fourth interception by the Dartmouth defense and it stops the Crusader drive. Yeah, just a high throw there. And uh, corner was right there to make the pick. We've been getting a little bit more pressure from the group, the, yep. the edge now. Well, they know they can just sell out. You know, they know you, they know you got to throw, so they can just put their ears back and come at you. I was saying Rocco DeLeo was a catcher in high school, and he was a baseball and football player, and he devoted his time to football, and it's paid off for him here at Dartmouth. A couple of these guys on the Dartmouth side were recruited by Air Force wow. and Cornell and other Ivies, and they chose Dartmouth. No so a new quarterback is in, and it, it's the ball carrier is Parker, who is still churning and still moving. Kalen Parker's got first down yardage. Jake Pallotta's the new quarterback. He saw action in week one in the 41 to nothing route of Georgetown. Parker's got a first down after his carry. Yeah, he runs hard, Parker. No quit in the Dartmouth offense either. Send the extra tight end in motion, Mangus. And the give. Loss of a yard on the play is Parker. See who got him there. Looked like McCardle. Yeah, McCardle there, playing hard late in the game. So, uh, Andy, what you got to th think, Coach Chesney's going to tell his kids, "Hey, listen, I'm proud of the fact that you played for 60 minutes. Um, you know, you got just just one of those games. You ran into a team that was really good and they had a good game plan, and, and you just got to move forward. You go back to the Patriot League next week. You got to build on success. There was a lot of positive plays, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I would." There is Pallotta running on the keeper. He's over the 40, the 43. You can really, you can really hop on uh, the fact how well your red zone defense played. Yeah. You know? And this might be, I, I mean, I did not see Dartmouth last year. They were 8-2 a year ago. They beat Yale and almost won the Ivy League title. This might be as physically imposing a Dartmouth team in terms of size and depth that I've seen in oh, yeah. my time covering Holy Cross Dartmouth games. Both sides of the ball too, Andy, and the secondary is unbelievable. I mean, they're all, they all tackle, they all cover. Yeah, this Very is a, solid team. A really good group. Third and six. And the give is to Bear, and he cuts it back, runs into a host of Crusaders, and will be short of the first down. Zach Bear, I think defensively what they do so well, there's four, three, four guys up front just do enough damage that they can drop seven guys back. And you're not going to get any separation when you have seven guys no, very true. covering at all times right. on yep. pass plays. That's the key on defense, and If you get pressure with four, you're really sit, sitting pretty pretty well because, because you've got seven defenders, like you said. And they have, you know, Holy Cross is, they're going to have to work to continue Let's to go. have guys find separation. They were able to get it against Yale last week. They got Mountain separated this week. Crusaders bring in the heat on the punt, but Brief gets it away. And Dina Cola takes it right at the 23-yard line. Time out on the field. Holy Cross gets the ball back with four minutes and change left, trailing the Big Green. providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. Our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values? Our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. 
committed to our community. We live here, we work here, we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. Welcome back. 407 to play. Crusaders down 27. Send it down to the sidelines with Brenna Wilson. Brenna. Yeah, the Holy Cross, Holy Cross coaches try to make sure the team is ready for anything. They will cover the ball in water and turf pellets so that the long snapper has to be able to hike the ball in all conditions. They even squirt Richie DiNicola, their punt returner, with water bottles. And they hope by, by preparing the team for anything, they can go out and compete with confidence. All right, thank you, Brenna. Yeah, they do. They, they, they have some fun with these guys. They soak the ball and spray them with water. It's unbelievable. Here goes Wade. Wade's going down. Sacked on the play. You got some reserve defensive linemen doing, doing work there for Dartmouth. That's Nico Lalos with the sack. Let's go, Nico! They don't get much smaller on the on the on the guys that are in the backup roles. There's a quick hitter out to Tate Beachley. Yeah, Beachley's first catch. The backup defensive line, huge. Got the yardage back and then some. Third and nine coming for Holy Cross. Yeah, these guys are still pretty big. These backup guys, backups on the uh, Dartmouth defensive roster. Wade. Pocket collapsing. Wade's got a scramble and he fires to the outside. Long throw and it's caught. Caught there and that's Jordan Montgomery. Welcome back to the fray. Jordan Montgomery is a battling injury. Andy, that's a long, it's a pro throw to the side, one side to the other. Jordan Montgomery is a really talented guy and to if he's getting healthy, that's a good thing for Holy Cross coming back. Oh, just a monster rush. My goodness, that's Lalos again. He's Holy a cow, that was physical, physically imposing. My goodness, that's the backup defensive end. He just, he's making some things happen out there. So Wade with a second and 19, clock ticking under two and a half minutes left. Wade steps up, fires downfield. Montgomery caught it. Nice Jordan Montgomery at the 47 of Dartmouth. His second catch. Again, nice throw, long throw, uh, out pass, right on the money. There's the handoff, toss out to New running back there, that's Matt Vecchiarelli. He's got the first down, they move the chains. Holy Cross getting some offensive motion here in the fourth quarter. Here's Wade, screen, Montgomery has it. Got some blocks in front of him, Montgomery bouncing to the outside, not a lot there as Dartmouth recovered very quickly defensively. Yeah, this is your tunnel screen, wide receiver screen here. Set up pretty well and actually made a pretty good run after the catch. Thomas defended it pretty well. See number 66, Neil Nasuti, the St. John's grad out there now. Some reserve offensive linemen in there. That one intended for Montgomery. Incomplete. It's now Dartmouth brings in some wholesale changes. Nasuti, a true freshman, playing on that offensive line. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Talked to his parents ahead of before the game and loves it here. Chris Smith, his offensive line coach, one of the better ones in the land. Here's Wade, rolling. Wade's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to throw. A lot of steam on that pass to Beachley broken up, be fourth down. Yeah, good defense too. Well, at least they got off the snide a little bit in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they got it up to 174 total offensive yards. They were, they were in the 20s and 30s for a long time. 
And they actually have five first downs by the numbers now. All of them coming in the fourth quarter. Been a thorough, thoroughly dominated game by Dartmouth. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Fourth and short, complete Beachley first down. He's out of bounds inside the 30. Nice play there. Move the sticks. And there will be brighter days for Holy Cross. Bucknell next week, another chance for them to get a win in the their first win in the Patriot League of the season. For a close loss to Colgate in week one. Wade looking downfield, has time, fires, and it was behind John John Roberts. No, Andy, they've had a real tough early early season oh. schedule. I mean, I mean they're, they're not playing. Yeah. They're not playing down. No. I mean, they still have Harvard and UNH right. on the schedule. So they're a non-conference schedule with an FCS, uh, FBS opponent in Boston College, maybe as tough as it's been with because of the caliber of those teams. Those teams are all good this right. year. UNH might be a little down, but UNH down it's is still UNH. It's so. still UNH. Right. Here's the second down throw. Complete Spencer Gilliam. Gilliam, a little stiff arm there at the end of the play. And he's close to the first down. They're going to give him the yardage to move the chains. It's the first down for Holy Cross. I'd like to see them stick another one in there, make it a little bit more respectable. Find a little bit of the swagger here in the fourth quarter. Here's Wade, Beachley. And right now Dartmouth's just giving them the short stuff. Right. Now Wade's it's inside the 10. Well, see, Wade's more in rhythm now too, you know, he's doing a lot of timing passes and uh, he's been very accurate with the football. One oh one left. Can the Crusaders put one more one in here? There's Wade with time. Wade over the middle. Touchdown. <laughs> Jeff Wade finds his man. The Crusaders have a score at Beachley with the catch. It's 34-13. Yeah, nice throw, nice play. We'll take it. Like the effort, Andy. He's, you know, playing for 60 minutes. That's what you want as a coach, and he's, he's certainly got it on this, this football team. Tate Beachley in his first action of the 2018 season. Couple of catches on that possession and a score. And Ng puts it through. It's 34 to 14. Yeah, Wade's really gotten a rhythm here in the fourth quarter. Nice patience. See, he swings his head around and throws a dot for a touchdown. See his head, we're zoning in a lot in the beginning of the game. This time he's looking all over to scanning the field and finds the open guy and hits him. Nice job. Well, Jeff See his head, how he goes left and yeah. he comes back, he swings it right. That was good. Jeff Wade's numbers, 20 of 31, 196 yards. Wow, a lot more respectable. Two touchdowns, four interceptions. Three of those came early on in this one. And uh, Tate Beachley. Four catches, 28 yards, and a touchdown. Can't take that away from you. Nope. Division one TD. How about the defensive effort, though? Ryan Brady has 17 total tackles wow. today. So yeah, he's improved on his 11-plus a game. Yeah, he's a great football player. And again, they, 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 they sold out the whole game. They were on the field, excluding the fourth quarter, the whole, the whole game. So... Those are where the numbers, the numbers are the largest is the defensive size. Alex Johnson has 13 total tackles. Joe Lang has eight. Oh. 55 seconds left. Holy Cross has already converted uh, and recovered one onside kick. This might be uh, are gonna kick a, a deeper, different I look. I bet you they kick a deep. They had a little pop-up kick in their arsenal last week. That won't fool Dartmouth. They've seen it on film. There's a little in-betweener kick. Question is, did he call for a fair catch? He put his hand up and waved, but it wasn't a fair catch. And 
Doesn't matter, you're covered it to Cooper. And they'll have it at the 18 yard line. College Football on Charter TV 3 is brought to you by the Central Mass Safety Council for Tara Nissan of Auburn, Holy Cross Athletics, and by Nichols College. Fifty-three seconds left in this one, and uh, after this, Holy Cross will button it up. They'll do film, have a lift on Sunday, and get back after it to get ready for Bucknell in the Patriot League next week. Here's Jake Pilata running, and he's got a few yards out to the 24. And they'll they'll move on from there. And then then they have two more non-conference games in UNH and Harvard, which are just really the challenge. And then they get back into the meat of the schedule to finish the year. Patriot League certainly not decided by any means. It's only one game's been played with Holy Cross, but he would have to uh, pretty much win it out to have any kind of. Chance still on his feet is Bear, and he runs into Hanahan and has a first down. The Crusaders thought they had him dead to rights. He just kept going. That let's see should be the last play of the game. Time expires at Fitton Field. Dartmouth all over Holy Cross in this game. Crusaders get a spark in the fourth quarter to make it a 34 to 14 final. Next week, Bucknell comes to town. Holy Cross will look to right the ship and get a Patriot League win. Our coverage begins live at 1 p.m. For all of us here on Charter TV 3, for my partner Terry Wallace, Brenna Wilson on the field, Sean Grady, our producer and director of this game, I'm Andy Lacombe, saying good afternoon from Fitton Field where the Crusaders fall by a score of 34 to 14. <laughs>